But yeah, finished last yesterday. Now it's King. A fan favorite. A lot of people have gotten into the series by looking at King's multi-part throws, right? Um, but, like, King is one of those characters that's actually very complicated. And I feel like when a lot of people, like, speak to him being complicated, uh, it looks bad. It looks bad, guys. I'm going to have to go. It's a full screen. But let me keep talking anyway while I do this. When I see a lot of people talk about King being complicated, I feel like they focus on, like, giant swing and that yeah that's true but then they focus on oh you gotta remember all these multi-part throws no fuck that you don't gotta remember all any of that shit that stuff could come later but that's not important for king king is difficult because giant swing is a very big part of his game and you have to be able to execute that in a lot of instances where it might feel awkward that's one thing you don't need king's wave dash um so, like, the difficulty of his wave dash doesn't really matter. But you do need Giant Swing. And you need to be able to do a Shining Wizard and Instant Shining Wizard. Those are very important things for King. King. Instant Shining Wizard, thankfully, isn't as important as far as his juggles go. But in his neutral, it's still a big part of his neutral. You also uh, need the ability to execute some of his other damaging 1 plus 2 break throws on command to mix up with Giant Swing. What's up, Angel? Well, King has a lot of movements because of command grabs, right? Like, if I just look through his movements right now, real quick, right? If I go all the way to the bottom, where'd he go right before the grabs? Actually, no, the regular moves end at 10 hits, right? The regular moves all end here. So, 83. As far as strikes go. Then we go into the 10 hits, right? And now we start going into winding nut. Now we start going into his grabs. So look at look at how much his grabs make his move list like bloated. See all this. We we ended we ended strikes at 83. We're at 184. Sorry, let's skip the sample combos. We're at 179. Almost a hundred taken up on his move list is because of his grabs. So, going through his grabs will be generally quicker than going through his actual strikes and moves. So yeah, it might still be a three-parter, but you know. Uh, by looking at the animation, well, some people say that you could break a uh, giant swing, especially in this game since you can break grabs later. You could visually confirm the giant swing because he grabs at your legs and then you could tap one. Right? Like, if I do that right now. Right? I'm bad at giant swing on two piece side. It's funny because Marduk had a giant swing input as a grab. Oh, am I inputting it wrong? Yes, I'm inputting it wrong. That's why. Whoops. I was inputting half circle back forward. It's forward half circle uh, forward, right? Wait, it's forward half circle forward? Yeah, okay. It's forward half circle forward. I was doing half circle back forward for some reason. Alright. Right? So we, we, uh, we got this recording, right? Let's see how late I could break it. Nope, too, too late. Yeah, you could kind of, kind of, edge case, see him grab at your legs and then tap one. You could do that. And I feel like, especially in this game, because of the bigger throw break window, so yeah, if you're sharp, but the general idea is even if that's possible, that's not going to be possible 100% of the, of the time, and you're going to put that in your opponent's mind, and this is going to be another thing you have to think about constantly. You know what I'm saying? I did Lars Part 2 yesterday. It's on the YouTube. Um, there's a guy on YouTube. Uh, what did I say? Uh, good Normals with Geese, if you check them out. Yes, Geese is probably my main right now. Good Normals with Geese. Side step three, uh, down two for good low pokes. Of course, down four. Uh, down forward one is a great mid poke check. Uh, and down forward one four is great because even though it's negative 14, I believe, it pushes out. So a lot of characters' punishes get pushed out of range. Uh, so uh, down forward one four to check mid, and then down forward one one is general mid pressure. And even down forward one by itself is good for geese. And uh, 
Yeah, there's probably more, but we're gonna go for some island. By the way, you, you, you're saying normals because you're maybe you're thinking about geese from um, 2D fighters. <laughs> All right. So yeah, King uh, is a character where you gotta you gotta be able to input his you know his grabs in a lot of situations, especially giant swing. Giant swing is the big one. You need to be able to do this shit like on command really fast, especially off of uh, frame advantage situations, neutral situations, even negative one situations because giant swing is a 10 frame grab, which is unusual. Did I switch it back to full screen? Wow, it's still dipping to 58 frames per second. Whatever, better than before. So yeah, you really need to be able to input giant swing. That's like key, key thing. Even if you're at a bottom level and you're just learning king, just get the hang of the giant swing input. Get the hang of it. Get the hang of it. Just get the hang of it, right? Try to use it during matches. Even if you fail, just try to slowly get better at it. It's very important. Uh, the, the Shining Wizard, the instant Shining Wizard is less important, but it's going to be something you want to you wanna be able to work your way up. So there we go. Because then you can run up and mask the dash up with uh, Giant Swing. It's like the perfect uh, mix-up. Of throws because the whole thing about it is King is uh if in case you don't know I'm sure everyone in the chat probably knows this by now but in case you don't or somebody's watching on YouTube King's giant swing grab breaks the uh the rule the rule for throw breaking is you look at the hands giant swing he's reaching with both hands so it looks like a one plus uh, a one break a one plus two break sorry but it's actually a one break you're supposed to break this with left punch but he reaches with both hands, which uh, visually in Tekken means both punches. But that's not the case with uh, Giant Swing. And when you mix that up with a proper 1 plus 2 break like Shining Wizard, which I didn't do there. Like Shining Wizard, that's an actual 1 plus 2 break. It's the same animation. See? Same animation. And then, see, I haven't practiced this, but the general idea is you could, like, mask the... Uh, Woo! Thanks for the sub, Korean Lowly Grinders. Let me let that play. Thank you very much for the sub. Um, let me wait that out. <laughs> there it is. Alright, thank you very much for the sub, Lowly Grinders. I greatly appreciate that. I'll look at questions again in a moment. But let me just get this thought out. So I'm trying to do it here. This is this would be one of the things I would practice for if I were a king player. Like dash up into giant swing and to mix up with that. Get that input down, because that is a very dangerous grab mix up. Uh <laughs> I'm glad I could help. Uh yeah, my, my bad. I met safe moves just to throw out. My biggest problem with him has been applying pressure. Uh gonna hit the lab. Yeah, geese definitely. Uh geese down two is like a 14 frame low where he just kinda slaps you in the toe. Uh, it doesn't have much range, but when you're up close, it crushes high as 14 frames, and it's only, I think, negative 12 on block. Maybe negative 13. If it's negative 13, be careful who you use it against. But, um, in general, it's low risk, right? Uh, side step 3 is good, because on counter hit, he gets free follow-ups, which gets a little weird, depending on who you're fighting. Sometimes he can get down 4, half circle back uh, 3. Other times, he can get a full combo. You're going to have to, like, just test that out yourself to see who it, who, who it works on and when best does it work on him. Um... And yeah, down four, obviously. Those are the low pokes. And down four to one, he's just like, hey, Hachi's down four to one. Negative one on block, and then he has down four to one, one, natural combo. They could duck it. Down four, one, four. The second hit is mid. Pushes back 14, negative 14 on block. But on counter hit, that gives him a juggle. So he has a mid check for juggle for his down four, one pressure. So there you go. And remember, even when you're geese, crouch jab is always a 10 frame counter hit combo started for geese because crouch jab into forward one combos or counter hit so even now off of a block down forward one you're negative one you could still go for a crouch jab forward one that's a totally viable thing all right uh what else did i miss uh dash of giant swing sounds nasty it sure is do you think you could uh do you think doing a crouch dash into instant shining wish of gs is worth doing angel if you're good at uh with the crouch dash stuff you don't have to mask your uh, giant swing input uh, with Shining Wizard. You could do the other, the crouch grabs, which is, uh, what is it, this? Uh, I forgot the input. He, You could do his full crouch grabs, right? What is it? Uh, I don't know the input. The rock bottom? Doesn't he have the rock bottom from here? Let me just look at it real quick. He has the rock bottom from full crouch. Oh, yeah, he has that too, but that's a little slower, isn't it? I'm talking about, if you're talking about mixing it up, you want something that naturally comes out. Hold on a second. Full crouch. Uh, that's a 
That's the ground grabs. This clothesline press. Yeah, this one. Uh, is this one of them? Wow, this is actually. Is that it? I'm in putting it wrong, aren't I? Uh. He has rock bottom for 45 damage. It does five more damage, so. see king players do this and I'm starting to see why it's he has to to do the giant swing out of a crouch dash he you have to input forward first right so you have to cancel out of it so if you have to cancel out of it it doesn't matter so do I think it's do it's viable sure but I don't think it's this amazing mix-up tool that's, I don't think it's any. It's that much better than just running up and mixing it up. I guess I'll put it that way. Is that fair? Shiny Wizard has a superior Oki. That too. So yeah, that's how I'd put that. All right. Either way, that's pretty much my setup for King. Those are like really important things that make him hard to use, in my opinion. But outside of that, he has good poking. Better poking than he used to because he has Armor King's down three. And he always had pretty good with punishment, I feel. But now he has even better with punishment because he got Armor King's forward two one. Which, of course, he also stole, Mar he also stole Marta's forward two down one two to catch people ducking the forward two one. So, King in this game is fucking buff as hell. This might be the best King ever. I don't really know how he was before Tekken 5. I played before Tekken 5, but I didn't know enough about Tekken to really tell you how he was before then. But I feel like since I started learning Tekken with 5, this has got to be easily the best version of King ever, right? The strongest. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so now that we got that out of the way, we're going to go from the top of RB Norway's move list here. Let me take a quick peek. What's up, Zen? If you can get the shiny wizard or crouch dash, that's cool. Alright. I could do the crouch dash shine and shiny wizard and then, then Then Angel, then yeah, that, that's totally fine. I just don't think it's, like, something that's going to be, like, amazing. But if you feel like you're comfortable with doing that sort of thing, then by all means... He's asking about Crouch Dash into into Instant Shining Wizard like that, or you know, Crouch Dash into a Giant Swing, right? Because then, because then, the Crouch Jab, uh, sorry, the Crouch Dash, the Crouch Dash has the Command Grab startups in there, which have also, if I'm not mistaken, those break the rules also. It looks like one plus two breaks, but you have to input one or two here, right? If I'm not mistaken, I might as well check that out real quick. Right. Yep. Yep, they break the rule. So basically, he has a uh, Soul Calibur style 50-50 mix up on his crouch dash grabs, which start chain grabs. That's what makes his chain grabs good, in my opinion. It's not the fact that they do a lot of damage. It's the fact that the startup of a lot of them is crazy shit like that. All right. So anyway, we're going to work from the top here, like always. He has a standing one jab that is 10 frames. Uh, quick little like tidbit here, if uh, you want a little, what do you call it, uh, trivia. In uh, Tekken 5 and DR, there were still 10 frame jabs and 8 frame jabs. King, if I'm not mistaken, was the only character in the game with 9 frame jabs. Weird, right? Either way, goes, his jab is just a quick little palm thrust here. Open hand. Plus 1 on block. Uh, plus 8 on hits. So, standard. And then he has a 1-2 jab that's pretty standard also. Negative 1 on block, plus 6 on hit. Combos. Um, uh, okay, he used to have a forward 1 as a move, was it? Maybe not. Whatever. You can hold forward with him to get more range out of his jabs. Because he, he does not have a forward 1 as a move. It's 4 forward 1 I was thinking about, right? Yeah, it is. Alright, because he used to have to dash jab and 4 forward 1 would get in the way of that. But that doesn't matter in this game. Um, so yeah, so he has a good 1-2 uh, here. I think his 1-2 does more damage than a lot of others, doesn't it? Yeah, his 1-2... I don't think there's too many 1-2 strings in this game that do over 20 damage. Or even 20 damage at all. They usually do like 17 or 18. His does 22. That seems a lot higher than usual. And if I'm not mistaken, that generally is his 10 frame punisher other than 2-1. Which is his other one, which is also 22 damage. So, solid 10 frame punishes here. Solid jab strings. And even on block, they're good. So, after 1-2... 
he has follow-ups. He has the gimmicky one, two, two plus four, which is always a two break, so it's like whatever. I got these settings on. He has to stand up. So I would not recommend ever using this, but if you want to fuck up your friends that don't know shit about Tekken, I guess that's one thing you could do, right? One, two, two plus four. He has one, two, one, two, down two plus four to catch people ducking there for some reason, right? You don't, you never have to duck that, just break it and call your friend an idiot, right? But here's where we get the good stuff. One, two, one. So to catch people ducking after you one, two, you had general one, two pressure, and then you could just tack on this mid, basically, to check them, right? And it's only negative four on block when you tack on the mid. Only negative four, so you could totally sidestep after it, pretty much. You could also delay it quite a bit. Um, spacing. And it's plus five on hit. So the cool thing here is what RB Norway isn't showing me right now is this is actually the start of one of his ten hits. One, two, one, one, two, four, 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 and then the rest. This is like when I learned Tekken back... Well, I didn't learn Tekken. When I started playing Tekken as a kid in Tekken 1 and 2... The first thing I learned was like 10 hits, and King's was the first one I used because King's the pro wrestling character. So I know that one. But either way it goes, the first four hits of his 10 hit are actually really good. Because they combo. They do leave him at negative 8 though, but it pushes back. So 1-2, one, 1-1. One, one. It's a good way to check people uh, ducking, right? But is it safe? Okay. This I didn't know. This is something you see a lot of King players do. Oh, they end it there because it's negative 10. I see. So, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2. It's negative 10. So, if you end it before that, it's actually negative 19. I'm trying to see if that combos. Ah, and it does combo. So... <clears throat> Ah, those three hits are natural combo. If the mid checks them, and they leave him at plus one. So that's actually where they end it. My apologies. They don't go after that, though. So that's negative 10 on block to catch people ducking, but you get 22 damage. Uh, negative 10 on block if you don't catch them ducking, but you get 22 damage if you do catch them ducking. Did I miss anything in the chat? Uh, I wonder if it's viable. Yeah, it could be helpful if you're good at it. Manny, can you do up 1 plus 2 during crowd stats for an easier 1 plus 2 break option? Uh, yes, you can. There you go. I mean, I'm assuming that's it. I'm trying to input that. See? Uh, one hits on counter here after the 1, and you're plus 10 and get a free 1 2. Mm. Angel is a king player, so he's giving me tips here. Oh, look at this. So if that counter hits, you get a free one too. Or a two one, but that pushes out further. What about the uh, fourth hit? Anything special here? No, it's still negative eight. Oh, okay. Well, that's cool. Is it counter confirmable? Uh... Doesn't look like it. I got plus eleven there. I don't think that matters though. I don't, unless back one is eleven or it's twelve. Um, but that's still good to know. So in general, if you connect this, you could just go for a one two again if you really want. I would go for a two one, just in case people duck. It might clip them. And it'll still combo if you get the counter hit. You know what I'm saying? You basically give them a shorter window to punish you if they duck. So, that's a good little tidbit there. So, yeah, his uh, fucking 1-2 string's really good. He has all sorts of crazy shit attached to it. This 1-2, this, this just makes 1-2 by itself super buff. It's like, oh, negative 1, negative 1, stomp. Negative 1, <laughs> stomp. Negative 1, plus 1, stomp. You know? No mids there yet, but we'll get to the mids soon. So yeah, really good move. Alright, so uh, yeah, and then he also has 1-2-1 one, one with the grabs also. Useless. Don't use this. 1-2-1, one, 1-2-1, one, one, uh, 
2 plus 4, 1, 2, 1, down 2 plus 4. Useless, don't bother with that bullshit. It's trash. Uh, but 1, 2, 1, great. 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, great. All good stuff. As far as if you could do any sidestepping around these strings, I don't know. Doesn't look like it. Ah, there it is. Yes. Okay, so that's one way to beat it. And yet another reason to just end at 1 2 1. So he does have risks. Right? That's back one counter hit. So there's risks. You could sidewalk and make him whiff the rest of it. But like I said, you can't sidewalk that third hit or a step. So, it's good shit. Alright. <clears throat> Moving on to the next thing is his standing two jab. Apparently, this is also 10 frames. Um, I think you can sidestep side on the one, two, one if they delay the third. Yeah, if they delay it, of course. Delaying it is going to ruin the tracking. That makes sense. I don't know how much I delayed it there. Yeah, see? Yeah. So there's risks involved for against someone that really knows the matchup, but I don't think you're going to see too many people uh, sidestepping in these situations or sidewalking. Yeah. All right. So that's that. Next, we got standing two, which is also 10 frames. Plus one on mock also, which is a rare thing. And plus seven on hit. So, like, the cool thing about this is in certain situations versus a lot of characters, when you get yourself, let's say, a plus three or plus four, you'll have a situation where your one jab will track to your left side and your two jab will track to your right side. And that's why it's cool to have a standing two jab that's plus one. That basically works just like a 10 frame jab for the most part. Like a 10 frame one jab. And by the way, any plus one or, or even situation, this is a plus one. Frame traps, it's a giant swing. Remember this about King in general. When you're zero, when you're zero on block, you frame trap the giant swing outside of jabs. Jabs will counter hit you because collision on the same frame is counter hit. And when you're at plus one... Giant swing is always a frame trap as long as you're up close and you input well, as in you don't in, you don't input slow, right? Am I inputting it right? No, okay. And that's also another good reason to hold when you're jabbing with one, hold forward to jab because that buffers the forward input of the giant swing for you, right? If you got someone next to you that listens to buttons, though, that might be a giveaway because you have to do a lot to get a giant swing out. <laughs> so that that is a bit of a tell, I guess. So you can hit him with the ghost buttons to catch them, maybe. Anyway, <clears throat> next we got 2-1. Like I said, uh, standing 2. Well, oh, that's 4-4 four, four, neutral 2. Standing 2-1, 10-frame punish also. Negative 2 on block. I think this used to be 0 on block, so I actually got nerfed a bit. Uh, at least th this was 0 in, in, in DR, I think. So maybe he was in second 6 or tag 2 that he nerfed that. Either way it goes, negative two on block is still great. You can move around after it, so. And it's a good to have a high into a mid option to check people. It's a little hard to dash into, as you can see, because he has forward, forward, neutral two as a move. A very risky move. But if you're up in their face already, it's not a bad uh, thing to use. And, uh, yeah, like we saw like we saw earlier, 2-1 is plus five with some pushback on hit. Just a little bit, though. All right, so next we got one plus two, of course. Classic, right? So 1 plus 2 leaves him back turn on block, negative 11, but it has two follows. 1 plus 2, 1, which is negative 13. That used to be negative 14. That got buffed a little bit. Um, and 1 plus 2, 3, which is a high, negative 3 with a lot of pushback. So it basically might as well be plus, like, whatever, because you're all the way over here. What the fuck are they going to do? Um, real gimmicky thing to do is to go back turn into the unblockable. That's this dumb kitty shit. But, um... The 1 plus 2, 1 is a natural combo for a lot of damage. And the 1 plus 2, 3 is also a natural combo for a lot of damage. And they both wall splat. 
here's one thing you need to know about this move. If you're fighting someone that knows the King matchup, let's see if this still applies. Oh, maybe not. Oh, did they buff it? All right, maybe they buffed it. Or maybe it's just a King thing. Because King is counted as like a semi-big character. But you used to be able to, at least, uh, sidestep both of his options. 1 plus 2, 1, and 1 plus 2, 3. Yeah, I, that's, what I was, that's what I'm getting at, Angel. It appears that King cannot, though. Let me do it on the AI, because they they're perfect with their sidestep. <clears throat> there it is. Okay, so this is me being bad. It is a very tight window. He's not even starting the sidestep. It's crazy. Yeah, I totally can't do it. Man, just to check. Let's switch to Kazuzu. Maybe it's the FPS dips. <laughs> we'll blame that shit. So we all know Kazumi has above average movement. I just want to make sure it's not just like a king thing where it feels weird for him. me at all this is crazy eh. wow weird also I think this pushes back quite a bit doesn't it no it, oh yeah it leaves him a little bit space but yeah you'll still be able to punish him because this yeah I don't know I don't quite get what's going on here uh I don't have an answer as to why the AI is doing it and I'm not. But this is historically has been a weakness for this move. Either way it goes, you could also just guess duck, because the mid by itself isn't the scariest thing in the world to get hit by. And you get heavily rewarded for ducking the high kick. So if you want to take that shot, maybe be a little careful if your back is to the wall, but because <laughs> you will get wall spatted by the mid, but uh Mid stage, if you see this being used for some reason, you can totally take the guess, take the read, and duck. And uh, I will also add that if you're against King and you do choose to duck, come up with an attack no matter what because he'll be back turned. Right? Yeah. Now, if I'm, wow, 25 on counter hit and uh, 21 on regular hit. Another popular thing to do is to sidestep right. I don't know if that adds any evasion to it. A sidestep left, I'm sorry, into it. Uh, but that's usually why I see key players. There's always a sidestep first into it. So I don't know if that adds any sort of evasion, but it is definitely something that I notice when I watch other key players play. <clears throat> So like if I were to uh Yeah. He can turn around a block quite fast. But he can't turn around jabs either. Which means By the way, this is King's punish to Ling Zhaoyu. Uh That's how Lee, uh, he punishes Ling Zhaoyu's uh, California roll into the root kick. Or a back throw. Which is honestly similar in damage. But yeah, um, maybe don't come up with an attack every time because 
He turns around quite fast, right? I thought he would recover a little slower because he's negative 11. But the kick is a pretty big whiff if you want to look for it. Yeah, that's a huge whiff. You could easily visually confirm and then hop kick. Or while standing 2 or whatever your while standing launcher is. King's back forward, one puts the back throw, does shitloads of damage. Oh, the uh, Road Dog. 75 damage so if that's uh, 11 frames or faster you could uh, punish Ling Zayu's rule kick with that grab sure anyway giant swing is 10 frames that's why I know giant swing works so yeah one plus two uh, on hits what was it Oops. it's negative two I didn't even know so if you want to like force back turn stuff out of that you're getting into gimmicky territory though he does appear to have a back turn eight frame jab at a back turn. Oh, he doesn't have a standard down four, though. Yeah, he doesn't. Wow, he can't do the generic uh, fast low out of that. Interesting. All right, 10 fan crouch tab is what he has. I'm trying down back four. Oh no, that's not. I'm doing the back turn. What's up, Zane Atlas? How you doing? I'm talking about the generic this. He doesn't have this from back turn like everybody else does. If he does, I don't know the input. He just has to drop kick. Anyway, I'm going down the list here, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself. So yeah, you know, one plus two one and one plus two three are both great moves, but they have their risks. Uh, next, we got one plus. Four. I tried that already. Uh, this is his moonsault. This is really only a uh, tech trap at the wall. At the wall, you could do a, as a wall comic, you can run up and do a one two and go right into that. And if they tech, they are guaranteed to get hit by it unless they stand straight up and jab you, I believe, or do like a standing four. A fast standing four, like a magic four. But in general, this is like a tech trap. As a matter of fact, maybe after the one to wall combo, this might be a, it might be 100% a tech trap. And the cool thing about this is it'll also catch people if they stay down. There are also mid-stage tech traps for this Moonsault. Uh, the general idea about using it as a tech trap is it'll hit them if they stay down. It's unblockable. It'll hit them if they get up. And it'll hit them in most situations, side roll either way. In some instances, they, you, could get, you could go toward one side, but whatever. Uh, take it easy, Angel. Thanks for tuning in. And thanks for the advice. Thanks for the tips. Yeah, that one two one. It's a good tip. I didn't know that about King at all. Counter hit one two. Uh, no, counter hit on the one free one two. That's good shit. All right, so that's uh, one plus four. He has one plus four from back turn also apparently, and it's more damage. Yeah, same thing from back turn pretty much, but he gets more damage out of it. Also, you'll notice that he recovers. In uh, face down feet tour situation. So if they get close and they get clumsy, you can hit them with the low and get a free juggle. Okay, and you do seem to be able to get up at around the same time. So it seems to be a neutral situation when you connect that for the most part. Um, Alright, so next we got forward to the new shit, right? Talked about it earlier. Forward 2-1. Big buff for King. Wall splats. Can be ducked. Is his safe? Oh. Fucking stand guard. Negative 9. His is safe. Some of them are negative 10. That's why I was checking. Uh, can be ducked. But if they duck, you get forward 2. Down 1-2. Which is a natural combo. If it's like Marduk's. Yep. Natural combo launcher. And that on block is negative 15. So his is way more unsafe than Marduk's. When Marduk had that move, it was negative 14 on block. For King, that is negative 15. Dangerous, dangerous, risky proposition in most matchups. If the character has a 15 frame Punisher, maybe don't use it too often. But still, it's something like, don't use this move until people prove to you that they're ducking this. 
That's what this is for. Don't just throw it out assuming they're going to duck because you think they're a good player. Make them prove to you that they're going to be willing to duck this and uh, maybe fish for the first hit by itself if you want to really play it safe to see to see if they're going to like duck it. But the first hit by itself is negative 11. Keep that. So if they mash, you know, keep that in mind. But still, make the opponent prove to you that they're going to be ducking forward 2-1 before you throw out the, you know, the whole thing. I don't care how good the opponent is. Test them on it. Uh, it's also a great whiff punisher. It is 15 frame startup. So if this is like Armor Kings, then it is difficult to sidestep. Haha. <laughs> ha. Okay, so you have to walk if you go to your right. But left. So it's not quite as good. Oh, you gotta walk it. <laughs> the second eclipse you otherwise. Woo, look at that. Look at the fucking wide ass hitbox on that one. Oh, but that's on the cameras. Alright, well. So definitely no not much tracking on it. But if you want to try to step it, you want to go left. It seems to be. Wow. And you also need to time it well. So it, it probably will clip people moving. But I want to use it with that intent. Like a Paul forward forward 2. Definitely would not use it in that way. But still, that's just a nice little bonus to have with that move. Uh, forward 2 one punishes Death Fist. Yes, it punishes spaced out moves fairly decently. Um, look at that. Two back dashes. Not three, but let's try two and a half, maybe. Oh, about two back dashes for King. Two, oh, okay, a little under two King back dashes. Yeah, basically a little, a little under two full King back dashes. It might just be like catching him sometimes, and it might have whiffed that one time because he's hopping back and forth when it stands. But basically, about two back dashes. All right. Um, so really good move. Uh, tracking is, uh, and we know that this is negative 15. I mean, we could check that too. Right? There you go. And you stay crouching. I mean, sorry, you stay standing when you block it. The second it leaves you crouching, it looks like. Ah, yes. It definitely leaves you crouching. Negative 13. Oh, what is that? 14? I didn't know that was 14. Wow. So King's while standing punishment is kind of whatever, right? He has a 10 frame. He has a 10 free while standing move. Um, but that this is one way you could use the move to be not launch punishable, but still negative 13. Some characters can launch that, but you could just do the second hit by itself. And you could delay the third hit. Is this hit confirmable? Hold on. This is better than Mardux. Holy shit. Mardux, you cannot uh, delay. Or if, if you could, it definitely was not hit confirmable. Kings is hit confirmable. That's cheap. Look, I'm not crazy. <laughs> but look at that. No matter how much I delay it. Wow, this is way better. All right, let's rewind for a second. So... Maybe you could fish for this just by doing the first, the, 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 the second hit. But don't go for the third. If you're going to use this, hit confirm it for sure. So it's only negative 13 instead of an easy 15 frame punish. Learning. We're learning. We're learning. Good move. <laughs> I can't believe that's hit confirm. That's crazy. That's crazy.
I don't really get why he was given that string as a as a mix-up for forward 2-1. Uh, I don't know. They were doing that whole thing where they were giving him characters moves, so they gave him Mardux. I don't know. What I find weird is, even though that is pretty much, for the most part, Mardux's st old string, it clearly doesn't work like it, because I didn't know it was Hickerfurable. I didn't know it was negative 15 instead of negative 14. I didn't know any of that shit. So you cannot sidestep, it seems like. And he could totally delay the second hit. Holy shit. If he delays it, he could probably sidestep it, but... You could totally fish for this. You could totally fish for this shit. Oh my god. <laughs> That's so cheap. <laughs> Imagine just barely whiffing this, and somebody goes in for the whiff punish, and then... Fucking just clip their ass. Oh, what a shame. You missed the whiff punish, and then get launched. <laughs> That's fucked up, man. That's fucking cheap. Alright. So anyway... Um, uh, next is, uh, do, 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 what am I looking for? Forward, back turn, one plus four, forward two. Okay, so we did the forward two stuff. Uh, forward three. Ah, this is a counter hit, hit throw. <sighs> What's the input on this? Forward three. Yeah, it's a regular hit throw. There it goes. The timing's a little weird, but I wouldn't call it super hot. Can you mash it? No, you can't. Oh, well, you can, but you might get one plus two by accident, so I wouldn't mash it if I were you. Yeah, this is a forward three is also a kick used in certain juggles. Uh, right? <laughs> I don't even know that's the good juggle. Ah, they reset. But yeah, whatever. It's This is definitely a kick uses certain juggles too. Because it's like 18 damage, which is pretty good. That's the first hit post juggle. Not great, but it's pretty decent to pick up. Instead of like this shit, because the first hit is 10 damage. That's shit. Why not pick up with that off of the 70 percent scaling, you know? And it is a hit throw for whatever damage, right? It's plus one if you don't get the hit throw. And it is negative eight on block, no real pushback, right? It doesn't move him forward much, so if you get them to block the tip, there is some space created, but not enough to make, like, to negate negative eight. So, I wouldn't count on that. Um, you can't reliably duck forward someone because you get hit by a uh, forward. Yeah, you're right. I agree. I mean, it's annoying. Whatever. I wouldn't call this a just frame. You gotta understand, when people say just frame, I mean, people kind of like use just frame loosely. Just frame really means you have one frame window to input, like a Heihachi electric, right? Or a perfect electric from Kazuya. But uh, here you have a bigger window than one frame. I'm sure of that. It does look like it gives decent Oki, too. Look at that. You saw the way he got up and got hit? Okay, it doesn't hit grounded at least. Yeah, that... Yeah, if you get up at all, you have to get hit by that. You have to get hit by that if you get up. So if you tap up to get up, you get hit back turn. Which is not a big deal for that, because you can duck the second hit anyway, because it's a high. And if you hold down back, you do get hit back turn, but you're crouching. It's weird. You get hit back turn either way. Guaranteed? Okay, no. Hold back to make it whiff. So then it becomes how bad can I punish that? 
Okay, so uh, 12 frames. What's 13? I know 13. Uh, that's 13, right? So yeah, you have a 12 frame window to punish him for that whiff. That's a pretty good risk. Because that's going to hit me, hit me if I stay down. If I side roll, let's see. Yeah. Even if I get a side roll in one direction, it's a free whiff in that situation. Nope, you can't side roll it. So the only thing you can do is hold back to escape that. And that uh, gives him a... Gives you, if you were to, do hold, to hold back, a 12 frame window to punish him. That felt slow. That again. That's what I like to see. We got a 50 50. <laughs> we got a 50 50 here. A legitimate 50 50. And this might get even nastier in a second. Because when I... Okay, no, it doesn't. I, if that forward two hit me back turn, then I would say go for forward two down one two. <laughs> Which would be fucked up, right? But hey, whatever. Yeah, that's, that is a legitimate 50-50. It might be match dependent on skinny characters, but it definitely works on King. Shit. So down three covers everything except holding back. And if they hold back, forward two one for free. Does this shiny wizard get the same Oki too? Maybe. Ugh. Ugly. No, it doesn't look like it. The angle is different. Yeah, no, it doesn't. The positioning is decent, but the recovery is, and the recovery is decent, but the positioning isn't good enough. If he had that sort of recovery with the positioning that he has on the hit throw, then yes, probably. Uh, all right. So yeah, forward three to the hit throw, great move. We got a full run of great moves here. Great move after great move, in my opinion. All right, next we got forward four. Oh, fucking another great move. Look at this. So, this is a mid, but the hitbox is a little, eh. A lot of shit goes, uh, like, anything that has a tendency to go under mids will go under this move, but still, it's a safe on block, right? Yeah, safe on block, homing, low crushing mid with decent range. I mean, you know, come on. <laughs> it's fucking great. All of that shit combined, great move, right? It's like Claudio's forward three, pretty much, right? That's about the Claudius 4-3 is a low crush, is it? Whatever. Yeah, and unlike Claudius 4-3, it doesn't tailspin. Still, 25, what is it? 25 damage? 25 damage, wall splats. So if you're fishing for a wall splat from like this range, basically, let's say the red cape king, uh, two player king was like pressed up against the wall. From this range right here with this sort of spacing, you have a shitload of wall splat options. You have forward four, well, maybe like right here. You got forward four, you got uh, forward two one. King is scary at the wall is what I'm getting at. You got a one plus two with the follow-ups and you can even sidestep into them, right? You got a throw, but you don't have to get close for the throw. <laughs> and for this side, uh, you could totally threaten with the running throw mix up. You can run up into up one plus two or run up into a giant swing, which will throw him away from the wall. By the way, Giant Swing always needs to point it behind you. That's why people, King players with their back to the wall will do Giant Swing, obviously. So yeah, King is scary at the wall, and that's one of the many reasons why. It's homing, so we don't need to test the tracking. Uh, oh yeah, forward three, I didn't test the tracking, did I? Yeah, no, no tracking at all in forward three. 15 frames though. But no tracking. A free dash down three for a free ollie kick. I 
get back to that. Is the music loud? Let me lower it a bit. Alright. Oh yeah, so yeah, forward four. We know at home, so maybe that's the tracking. So yeah, there's that. Next we got forward plus one plus two, which is just a straight up high unlockable. Oh no, sorry, that's forward forward plus two, right? No, what the hell was that? Man? How did I do that unblockable? Oh, because you hold it. Okay. This is forward one plus two. If you just tap it. So it's just a straight up lariat. That's negative negative one on block. He moves forward a lot, because it's a lariat. I think for Armor King this was crouch dash one and it gave him like plus eight on block with pushback. But for King, it's uh, negative one to zero depending on the range, I guess. I got to say zero before. Well, apparently that's two active frames and I got to say zero one time. Uh, knockdown on hits. Uh, maybe good Oki. On counter hit, same thing. Testing the tracking. Yeah, no tracking. Mm. That down three is probably guaranteed. Ollie kick was guaranteed. Can I tech that? Oh, you cannot tech it. Just making sure. Uh, Zufi? 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 I've seen your name a couple times, but I can't. This is the first time I'm noticing there's an L before the F. Uh, Manny, I have a question. It is kind of hard to explain, but after a combo, is it possible to hit my opponent after his wake up? How can I train that? And. <laughs> On what should I focus there? Are you typing on a cell phone? <laughs> Alright. Uh, I made a video on this, but it's kind of long, so I'll give you the short of it. Right? You're talking about Oki. Right? It's possible to hit my opponent. Oh, no. After they wake up? So you're saying when they get up off the floor? Like, like, uh... Are you talking about, like, a specific, like, a text situation? Is it, are you talking about, like, this? When they get up like that off the floor? Is that what you're talking about? Because you're saying after they wake up. What do you mean by get up off the floor? Get up off the floor by standing with an attack. So this situation is called a tech. He's teching left here and he could tech right. And uh, knockdowns that don't slam the opponent down allow them to do this. Like, knockdown like that, they can't do that, right? That's a hard knockdown, as they say. Uh, the way you take advantage of that is you got to delay your attack. So I'll give you an example. If I were just to do this right away, uh, because the whole thing is during the process of that, they're invincible, you see? Everything misses on them. See? They miss. So what you get is you could dash up, but you have to, like, kind of guess that they're doing that. Right? So you dash up, right? And in dashing up, as long as you time your attack well, you could uh, time it like uh, what 2D fighting players call a meaty or early attacks, where you stick a button out so right when they get up, they get up and recover into the attack. So that stops them from being able to sidestep, that stops them from being able to armor, that stops them from being able to super. It won't stop certain counters, but whatever. It stops all of that shit as long as you time it right, and that is how you take advantage of that situation. Uh, there are things called tech traps. King has one. Pa, ah, look at that. That's a tech trap right there. Although you're going to want to do a combo. But as far as when you could actually do it, you'd have to test your own character stuff. How do you test your character stuff? Have them record it on you. Record a setup on yourself. And then test the various ways that you could get up. Test what you could do about it. Test teching, mashing kicks, or mashing punches when you get knocked down. Right? 
hold back to get up or tap up to get up and then back block right uh oh, it's that right tap you could tap up to get up you could hold back to get up differently you could hold stay down in side row by holding down and tapping square or one you could go upward by tapping a punch toward the background just tapping the punch when you're down on the floor after you stay down and test the wake up kicks three for low four for mid yeah my video is really long though it's like a, it's like an hour and 14 minutes somewhere in my youtube <laughs> yeah how to test oki i think i called it oki is what you look for oki oki okazime okazumi whatever right so anyway four one plus two uh get seems to give him a free ollie kick uh let's test down back three Okay, down back three is guaranteed also. That's even more damage. Let me make sure. No, it's not guaranteed. So down back three, you could block by tapping back and pressing down. So don't use that one because it's launch punchable. Let me double check the Ollie kick. This is the one I learned during the Lars run through. You could tap back and, and hold down back. Yeah, but that's definitely guaranteed. So the Ollie kick is your highest damage guaranteed low. Uh, no problem, dude. That's what I'm here for. That's why I always welcome questions. Um, somebody's got to answer them. All right. So definitely Ollie kick down plus three plus four guaranteed is the one you're going to want to do. All right, next on the list is hold one plus two. This is forward and you hold, you hold down one plus two. You don't have to hold forward. Uh, it's just straight up high unblockable. There's not much to say about it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't track Yeah, use it like any other unblockable if they're if you get your opponent super scared They just want to catch them sleeping I guess but in general, it's not much to say about it. It's an unblockable. It's high. It does 50 damage um Next, forward three plus four. Ah, this is the drop kick. Uh, he always takes a step forward before this. Always. Forward three plus four, he steps forward and does it. Uh, this is a high though. Plus seven. And it is active for the whole time. Plus eight, you can make this plus nine at best according to RB Norway. So plus seven is gonna be the thing you'll see the most probably. That's that knockdown. Hold back. You can hold back during it. Okay. Counter hit, regular hit, you can hold back. Doesn't matter. And it's plus on block, and it moves forward a lot. And it's a high. Not much to say about it beyond that. I guess a step forward will make people think, oh, duck, and then that's when you can catch them with the running exploder, running three plus four. Right. See? So people might be like scared of duck because of that. And then you throw in a forward three plus four to get him standing. That's about it. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have any sort of tracking. Yeah, it does, but it's unreliable sometimes. That's why I uh, look at the RB Norway ship first. But you're right, act is supposed to be active frames. Yes. Uh, if you get too cursed with this running stuff, you can obviously get uh, jabbed out of the air and then juggle. Surprise, surprise, right? Um, by the way, that's a cool, if you're against a character like King, that's a decent tool in general if you have a decent read on your opponent, because a lot of his stuff. It goes into the air from this range. You'll be seeing this a lot. Not that, sorry. You'll be seeing that a lot. Because <laughs> it's a juggle starter, right? So, and it's plus on block. So jabbing him out of the air, sidestepping around it, you know. And in general, you'll you'll see him going to the air with, with drop kicks and shit. 
It's just a, it's just a semi-common thing. So sometimes when you notice that, you could fish for a jab if you want to risk it and you feel really good about the timing. Totally a thing you could do. And if you had decent jab range, I wouldn't do it otherwise. Otherwise, I would just try to move around that stuff. Keyword being try. Okay, so next we have fold forward 3 plus 4. Which is apparently a different move. It's the drop kick, but it's different. They're both 25 damage. Huh. No, they're the exact same move. You could just input it as forward 3 plus 4, forward 4, 3 plus 4. He takes a step forward with forward 3 plus 4, but forward forward, he doesn't take the step forward. And when you do forward 4, 3 plus 4, he growls. No, he growls either way. I don't get it. I guess you could just do it either way. Whatever. Weird. <laughs> it's listed here as two different moves, with the, but with the same properties. So, I don't know. Uh, next, you got 4, 1 plus 4. The pectorials, as Iris dubbed them. This is a good move. It's a mid. Chest bump plus 7 on hit. Plus 3 on block, which is a popular setup for shiny... Oh, sorry. Shiny with it. Which is a popular setup for giant swing. Of course, right? But plus 3, you can do a lot with plus 3. For example, this is a 13 frame counter hit move. But you do need to not be interrupted, so or exchange, not interrupted, exchange. So if they jab, they'll, you know, it won't get you anything. But still, that is a 13 frame counter hit move. Or you could just back one right after. That is a 12 frame counter hit jungle starter. It's a high though. So you know, it's a setup for a lot of good shit. Giant swing and a back one counter hit. Uh, if they duck, uh, crouch jab. Let's say no, not crouch jab. Uh, yeah, that's about it really. So since if they cross jab, you're gonna exchange with his 13 frame mid, so it's not that great for that. But even then, like you could do a little quick size up to add a little something to it, I guess, because cross jab is linear. So there's ways you could press your advantage off of that, other than giant swing. Um, as far as the tracking on that, In general, the best place to use this... I mean, it's decent in the neutral. Wow, it looks like it covers his left side for stepping. It could just be a king-specific thing, though. But one of the best situations to use this on is on a teching opponent. So, uh, if you're still in the chat... Uh, z z z z z whatever your name is. Um, you could totally... Do this. Uh... Where the fuck is tech? So, like, let's say uh, you put them in a situation where they could tech for whatever it may be. Right? Perfect situation to use this kind of move in because they have to block it. Right? Just to show you that in action. Let me see if I can record this right. That looks good. Let's see. I'm gonna mash everything I can mash. Nope. See? It doesn't even allow me to mash to the point of getting hit. But if I try to get up ducking, it will hit me. If I try to get up and move, it doesn't even let me move. <laughs> so the only way this could possibly hit me is if I'm holding down to duck. That's the only possible way that that could hit me. But because of the, the timing, it makes it like a 100% safe option. Because I can't do shit about this. And even if I block it, you're at plus three. What's up, Strangler? What's going on? So, if you're king, the uh, situation I was explaining earlier is a perfect kind of situation to use that move. Alright, um... So anyway, next we got... So that's the pectorials. Uh, next we got... No counter hit properties, right? Yeah, no counter hit properties. Just more damage. Uh, next we got forward 2-3. Yes, the armor tackle. So this move is mostly unsafe, but it can be made safe if you're far away. Up close is negative 12. And the further back you go, after like two back dashes, negative 10. And then all the way back here... Yeah, whatever. 
Yeah, it's hard to make it safe. There's a way to do this. There's something about this move. There it is. <laughs> you could do that, and you could like run away. Uh, if you're back turn and you press in this situation, you press, you still press forward, which for me, even though I'm back turn, it's still pressing right. If you input it as like you know uh, the, way, the 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 opposite of the way I'm facing right now, he'll just run. Um, see, he'll just run in the opposite direction. It's just a weird little gimmicky thing. It might even get you away from being punished in some instances. And it could be doubled as, uh, doubly used as some sort of dumb trolling shit, I guess. Uh, but in general, there it is. Hey, negative seven. I managed to accidentally find the spacing to make it super safe. <laughs> negative nine. So in general, from like two and a half back dashes or so, maybe a little more than that, maybe like three back dashes, that's where it starts to become safe. So if you're going to punish this, I would recommend doing ten frames, always. Unless you could easily see, hey, he's up in my face like this and does it. Then you could pretty much guarantee a negative 12. Punish. Uh, and there's no tracking in this. I already know that much. The thing is, if you do sidestep around it and try to chase him down, you got to remember he is back turn. And when he's back turn, he has shit like this. Like that mid kick. That could really fuck your shit up if you run into it. Because it's a juggle starter on counter hit. <clears throat> so that's how that dumb move works. The start it's slow startup, so I don't know if you know that's worth checking, is it? 23 frame startup, so that's not that kind of move. Um, next we got down forward one. This is a classic king move. So this is uh, 14 frames, and it is negative one on block, but you can pretty much kind of use this as his like primary mid poke for the most part. It pushes back a lot more than a lot of like down forward ones do. You might notice that. You see this? Most down forward ones that are like 13 frames keep you right in their face at negative one. This pushes back at negative one. So it's easy to set up with punishes, big time with punishes. And we already went through earlier, King has good distance like punishes, you know, with punishes from distance. So has that going on but it has more they didn't nerf it a bit but and i'll explain how they did it did that they did in a second so you'll notice he has a two follow-up right for 30 damage good damage plus one on hit it is negative 10 on block but it is delayable so what they did was in the older games you used to be able to delay the second hit and it would be negative nine instead of negative 10 and there was a window where you could do the maximum amount of allowed delay to still make a combo but still make it negative nine on block. They took that away completely. No matter how much you delay the the two in this down forward one two string, it is always negative ten. So there's none of that going on. You could still, if you're doing block pressure, delay the second hit to catch people moving and ducking and shit. Uh, it's still plus one if the second hit hits by itself, and there's no counter hit properties on the second hit. Still plus one. Also, this down forward one has three active frames, right? So if we talk about that uh, tech situation again, there was that one knockdown that made it easy to set up. I don't remember which one it was. Zero. We got zero on block. Plus one on block. There it goes. Um... So I don't remember which knockdown situation it was, but Aris actually found this, if I'm not mistaken. Well, after a, if you go for it right after a Shining Wizard, as you can see, it is zero on block if they stand up and block. So you could at least get it. That's one instant situation. Basically, it's good as an Oki tool. Uh, because then you can even delay the second hit and if people like see the first hit whiff and then they try to like wake up kick or get up afterwards the second hit will clip them for 15 points so it's a solid oki tool because you get that you get the active frame stuff going on right and then you get the fact that it has that built-in follow-up to kind of keep you covered from anything too major with punishing you if you whiff this on oki um Ah, wow. That's a bad way to touch that. Uh, 
uh, yeah, I know that. This is old shit. He does like what is it, a stunner or some shit? Does he need to count? No, he doesn't. There it is. Yeah, he does a stunner. Anyway, um... So yeah, another cool thing about this down forward one is that it tracks fairly well. And this is not just like a king thing either. Yeah, see? I said fairly well, I didn't say very well. In general, you really can't step it. And to prove that, let's see. Maybe uh, one or two characters could step it. <laughs> the best sidesteps in the game. But for the most part, it's pretty damn reliable. Let's see. Let's verify that. already set up. Right, so of course, the king was able to do it. She didn't able to do it. But... Oops. See? Yeah, see? Lily is one of the few that will get around off of a step. see a more uh, average character. I'm actually having trouble thinking about who would be like an average sidestep. <laughs> Negative one, yes, that plus one, no. Oops. Let's try one more. Be careful if you do it off of a jab, but off of a one two, you're good. It could be that like the AI is doing it like better, <laughs> like before where the AI was able to sidestep the one plus two shit, right? That's a possibility here, but for the most part, it's a solid tracking move. Definitely good for King's right side, at the very least. Oh boy, alright.
And even if they do sidestep it, the two is also kind of going to kind of check them. Suddenly he can't. I don't get what's going on, but all of a sudden I can't sidestep it. Weird. It's weird. Definitely a weird move. And King is weird because he's big. All right, um, and range-wise, it's pretty dang good, too. It has, like, a phantom hitbox here where I'm clipping his pinky finger, so I'm hitting him. <laughs> Next, down forward two. This is his 13-frame mid. You can kind of fish for it as a poke, but it is negative six, so be mindful of that, and it's only plus three on hit. But 13 frame mid, and then he has down forward 2 1 as the 13 frame counter hit string. Mid high, it can be ducked. Now, down forward 2 1 has a mini combo, and if I'm not mistaken, the combo for this changes based on the character that you're fighting against. See, I don't think he's able to convert that into a full combo. See? Maybe on big characters. You can do that. Down forward four, three, four. Down forward four, three. Ollie kick two. That's down people's pursuit. Nah, four, three, down forward four, three, four is more damage. Right? Of course, that might happen too, so be careful. do that that's very consistent if I'm not if I'm not mistaken that's down plus three plus four four two oops I don't think he got three yeah three whiffs now I want to test what would happen on gigas or bear Feet at a weird angle, so you can't really do that to him, I guess. Um, forward to one, I guess. Um, oops. Yeah, it's probably better stuff than that, but you could definitely convert it into a full juggle on Gigas. Just, it's really bad for King if that down forward four whiffs. Because that's a low high, and yeah, you can get fucked up for that.
Same thing here. One more. I'm gonna test it on Kuma, and this possibility it might work on other bulky characters, but I'm not gonna get into all of them, you know? I'll be here all day, but. Like, I would consider doing it on King, too. Oh, no, I tried it on King already, it didn't work. Um... Yeah, I don't know who else. Fucking feet. Well, there you have it. Black Omen. Feel free to ask more questions if you got any. Break some monotony a little. Uh, that's not forward two one. Let's check the tracking on this. Seems to be good against King, at least. Just tracking. Oh, I tracking on that's pretty damn good. They probably lose at least to one side versus other characters, but versus King is pretty good. Uh, next we got down forward three. Oh, this is the uh, stupid ass hold my foot. Yeah. The step up in Siguri. This is kind of whatever. That second hit is a high. It can be ducked, but I don't know if you can float him. Interrupt that. This shit seems whack. Negative nine plus two. Fourteen frame mid. I don't know. Even even if you use the down forward three by itself. I mean I guess the range, it's nice to have a fourteen frame mid with that much range. So maybe that's okay. And the fact that he has that insiguri throw. It's this nice little cherry on top. Definitely, it only comes out if the first kick touches him. Yeah, it looks. Uh, it looks like it should track to that side, and it looks like it does, right? Because he's kicking in that direction.
No plus two on counter hit. It's just the counter hit allows the second kick to combo. Okay. So that's that. Uh, it's very, it's pretty, it's pretty low risk to get it this duck. So there's probably not much reason to not go for it. So it's not the worst move, I guess. Because you can't float him. So you'll probably eat like a stomp style move. That's about it. Uh, next is... Down forward four. Okay, so we start going into this shit, right? So this is really only used in combos. But, uh... Down forward four, three does combo on counter hit. Low high. And there's down forward four, three, four, which does not combo at all. Made me off the second hit. Okay, counter hit on the second hit, it combos. Not on normal hit, right? Ah, it has a unique counter hit. Stun. I didn't even realize that. You could probably follow that up near the wall. Uh, maybe up close. How do I make them? Uh... Trying to test forward, forward one because that seems to have a really good hitbox. What's up, Zen? So, two Ali kicks into the mid. Down three plus four, four, two. Mm. Man, you can't delay that. Looks like even the <laughs> rage drive wouldn't work. Because he's already teching when I whiff that. Yeah, it seems like only the Ali kicks. If he has if he has anything better, I don't know. I do know that near the wall he'll have some better stuff. The point being though, this string isn't that great to finish because it's negative fifteen all block. I didn't even know that until recently, to be honest with you guys. I don't know if it was like that before in tag two. But yeah, this shit is negative fifteen. This shit is fucking whack. It's low high for the first two kicks, so you could duck the second hit. And then, if you block the third hit, you have another chance to fucking uh, launch his ass, right? And the last kick isn't even a homing move. Can you sidestep it on block? You get his rear if you sidestep it. Uh, 
That's a side throw. <sighs> yeah, he could recover back turn. Or he could recover standing regularly. If you hold back, he recovers back turn. Uh, negative eight back turn. So, uh, 14 frame mids with some range will catch them for turning around. So, they're basically guaranteed unless he... Nope, oh, still guaranteed. So, 14 frames are faster with uh, decent range. That's 15, and that's 14. Jabs will hit him, but he can duck the jabs. And 13 frame will hit him, of course, but it, it will turn him around, so you don't get the back turn shit. <clears throat> so it's 15 frames if he doesn't hold back, negative 15. If he does, he turns around, you'll need 14 frames with some range to punish. Still gimmicky. I still want to use this in a neutral situation. That string is there for juggles, certain Oki situations. That's really all that that's about. I want to use it in a neutral. Like, even this, he used to kind of have to use this as a low poke. Because it's 14 frames, so it's fast. I mean, and that kind of still makes it useful, I guess. Because this is 17 frames. But still, it's negative 3 and it doesn't crush highs. And he has access to the 12 frame low. 14 for him. Wow, hold on. It says 14 for him. This is not 12 frames for King. I'll have to double check that later. But he does have access to a high crushing low. That's negative 2 with down 4. So now that he has down 3. And he always had down 4. I don't see any reason to use down 4 for much. Alright. So next he had. Oh yeah. By the way. He could mix that up with a, a low drop kick. I almost forgot about this. <sighs> Boy. Okay, the counter hit on the second hit does not make a combo. And it still loses to the... You gotta walk it for sure. Yeah, you gotta walk it. With King, at least. Not a big punish. Of course, you could just low parry it also. Alright, take it easy, video games. Thanks for tuning in. How far am I? An hour 39. Okay. And I am currently on move. It's pretty good progress. I'm in move number 34. I'm almost halfway through his strikes. And my ass turn. <laughs> so next we got Frankensteiner. Frankensteiner is a hit throw. Let me see something about this knockdown real quick before I continue. Nothing guaranteed off of that, right? Nope, definitely not. Yeah, definitely nothing guaranteed. Just wanted to be sure. So it's just a, like a low hit. So Frankensteiner is a hit throw. 
Not even a hit throw, actually. This is this doesn't count as a hit throw. I'm sorry. This actually counts as a throw. It's a special mid, which is it, this has a weird, unique rule set. So consider this just a throw, right? Reason being, if you're standing blocking, he's gonna get it, right? And it's unbreakable. I think some characters can counter it. Yes, they can. Some characters power bomb him, like uh, Paul and uh, Heihachi, I believe. Uh, but most characters cannot. Um, So, the reason I'm saying just consider this just a throw, it's because even though it's a special mid, you duck it, you block it. You only get thrown if you're standing. So, if you're standing, it's an unbreakable throw. The reason thing, though, is that it's risky, though, is because he's easily floated out of it. It's like 30 frames. 28 frames. The cool thing is if I try to wall standing full while I'm ducking, it's gonna grab me. It's negative 16 according to this. Yeah, but he's not floatable. It's not like it's a capoeira um, relaxed dance. So you pretty much get a free hit on him if it's blocked. Yeah, so it's a goofy move. And if I jump, it hits me out of the air. For like 10 damage. <laughs> and that could floor break if you're in the floor break stage. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there's no real... I, I didn't expect any tracking, but I wonder if it's even had a wide enough hitbox to catch people stepping. My music's over. Chrono Trigger end. Yeah. Aww. Beautiful Chrono Trigger music. What do I have here? Ah, here we go. Alright. Uh, clutch situations. This guy situations where people are hesitating. Yeah, of course. You gotta get people afraid to use that. It's still good. It's like good amount of damage. 40 damage? 45 damage? That's good damage. Yeah, it's a good move. Definitely a good move. Just know that. Treat it like a throw. So if you're fighting against King and you're unsure about what to do about it, Duck. You gotta see it coming in duck. It's 28, so it's seeable. You just gotta recognize that it's a unique animation. This music is sick. Alright, um, so next we got... Ah, from space. So also, if you're not close, it will not grab, obviously. It'll just clip them. It counts as a special mid, so it's uh, blockable, standing or ducking. Standing or ducking, you could block this, but yeah, it's just a little bootleg hit. It says here that you're negative uh, some bullshit. That might be the problem with this, now that I think about it. Yeah, one back dash away from fucking this up. And it's punishable. So yeah. On block, it's punishable. On hit, it's uh, safe, but you don't really have any advantage. It says here, negative seven forces crouch on hit. <laughs> All right, so next we got down one, which is just a crouch jab. 
So King's cross jab from standing is just down one for him. Plus six. Great setup for uh, Shining Wizard, of course. A popular setup for Shining Wizard. Very popular. And uh, down one on block is negative five. Standard cross jab, right? The thing about King, though, is he has down one, two. This is uh, decent against one, two style pressure. Because then you got a 10 frame counter hit that leaves him even on even on hit. But it is unsafe. This is a decent round closer. This is a decent tool to use under pressure sometimes. Because it's a 10 frame counter hit. But it is a negative 11. So keep that in mind. Special mid mid. Plus one. <laughs> Plus one from a distance. It kind of moves it forward quite a bit. That second hit is uh, pretty solid in how much it moves it forward. So uh, we already know that a cross jab don't have any tracking, so I'm not going to bother going crazy testing that. But yeah, this is a decent move, and it's a great setup for giant swing when it hits, when it combos. Zero, zero. Of course, down one by itself is a little better. Just know that he has down one too. To you sometimes. It's a decent round close if you have a strong life lead too. If you're under pressure and you just want to pop pop. Um, next, we got down three. The move that he stole from Armor King. Great low poke. Only downside is it doesn't high crush, but it's fairly quick. 17 frames is pretty quick. Uh, plus one on hits, which means it's a great giant swing setup, like always. Easy to buffer, because there's a long animation recovery. Like, I'm literally really slowly inputting ba, Really slowly inputting the giant swing input during that. Easy to time. It feels, it feels good, is what I'm saying. When you input it like this, nice and smooth. Um, hits grounded. Nothing special on counter hit. And it's only negative 12 on block. So it won't get you killed. Only thing I have, I don't know about is the uh, track. The only negative 12. Tracking looks good. All right, side walk. So most characters will probably be able to sidestep it left, if I already guess. It might just be a king thing, or it might not. I don't know. But you could side walk left. Crazy or has this not gone through back? Okay, it hasn't. Good. So yeah, great little poke, great little buff to King. Good move, good move. Primary low poke, I would even say. During the neutral. <coughs> Next we have what is this called? Um, Atlas Hammer. Down one plus two. This is one of those fucking launchers that goes under mids, a lot of mids. It moves him a little bit to the right. And it gives them one of those, what is it, class three, whatever they call it, launchers. So. Oh, I did it.
Damn, I did it one time. There it is. 78 damage. It's a lot of damage, but it's launcher. But uh, on block, it's death. This shit is like negative 24. <laughs> negative 24 on block. I'm going to guess that. Oh, no. I was about to guess that he might recover crouching for a bit, but it doesn't look like he does. This shit is god awful on block. Matter of fact, it punishes itself. It's a 23 frame move. And then pretty much the whole cast could delay hop kicking. If they don't suck like I do. Whew. Whatever. Point being. It's a huge risk, so be careful with that move. But you can get a lot of reward off of it. A lot of damage. Uh, next we got... <laughs> they just call it Ollie too. That's funny. Uh, next we got Ollie Kicks. Down 3 plus 4. So, there's a little story about why it's called the Ollie Kicks. I've said it a few times on stream. By the way, I forgot to set the tracking on us. Let me do this first. I don't think it tracks at all, but whatever. It's one of those panic button moves you use under pressure. Yeah. Definitely no tracking on us. Atlas Hammer is a cool name, though. So next we got the Ollie Kicks. What's up, Angel? This is called Ali Kicks because of uh, Muhammad Ali versus Antonio Inoki in Japan. I forget, I think. Where Antonio Inoki, famous Japanese pro wrestler who uh, trained in MMA first. And he was just this fucking crazy guy that would always try to do like mixed work shoot. Work being pro wrestling fake, shoot being real. And he would always try to mix it. It was a big thing, a big goal of his. Lyoto Machida was his protege back in the late 90s, in the early 00s, in the aughts. Um, and he was generally a head case, whatever. But he agreed, uh, he got Muhammad Ali to agree to fight him in a, like a mixed like styles fight. But they had to make all these crazy ass rules. He had to agree to them to, uh, 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 for, uh, for Ali to accept the fight. Like the big one being, you can't kick him. He couldn't kick him. Unless both of his hands were on the floor, or and he had to be like in a damn near sitting position. And you'll notice the animation, well maybe it's just one hand, because King only does it with one hand. But the animation matches, like if you were to go to watch that fight, which I would not recommend because it's a shitty fight. It's like fucking a half hour of Antonio Noki sitting on his ass so he could kick Ali in the leg over and over again. <laughs> so that's why these are called the Ali Kicks. I don't know if the game calls them that though, does the game call them that? Um, stagger kicks, yeah, no, but people call them Ollie kicks for that very reason. So it's inputted with down plus three plus four, and then you can press four, four, four to get three in a row, and at any point you can press two to go mid, right? Not just that though, if you counter hit, you can go into five of them. And I don't know if you can go into mid after the five. After four. Nope. As a matter of fact, if you input it four times, you get the five kicks. Yeah. And that only happens if you get a counter hit at some point. Only the first kick, really. Yeah, so only the first kick has to counter hit. The second kick counter hits, you can't get the five kicks. 
whatever. It's a it's a goofy ass fucking move. Now a lot of newer Tekken players or even even mid level Tekken players they like to rely on this shit a lot. The going right into the mid is pretty decent because it's a counter hit string and it does wall splat. It knocks down at wall splats. It's risky as fuck though. Point uh, reason being, it's launch punishable. So if it doesn't counter hit me, it's negative 15, right? Yeah, negative 15. Doesn't matter if he does one or two or three. And I also want to show you guys that it's pretty much a gimmick. You can see it's such a unique animation that you could see him go mid. You could totally see him. If you guys have been watching me stream for a while, you've seen me do this several fucking times. And anytime I fucked up there, but anytime you block the mid, if you have a 15 frame launcher, you can launch him. You can launch him. You can launch him. You can launch him. What's up, Soggy Bank? I always thought it was the alley kick because the way people are pronouncing it sounds like alley kick. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's Ali, like Muhammad Ali. But um, I do think that going, doing one of them into the mid is a pretty decent, legitimate thing because it's risky because it's negative 15, of course. But this is a 16 frame low. So this is a 16 frame high crush, low counter hit string, basically. It's great at the at near the wall too, cause like it kind of pushes back a bit. You could you could get it to wall spat from fairly far away, and you could probably get a follow up if you run up and do this. By the way, uh, I forgot to mention dot forward four three four is actually a wall combo. If you can't get the standard jab uh, jabs into ground throw, you could do the this string as a wall combo, and the four in the end tends to hit low wall hit almost always. So it's good. That that's really what it's for. It's like a combo thing. Um, Anyway, back to Ali kicks. It's gimmicky ass shit to like just try to act like, oh, am I going low or am I going mid? At any point, you know, you could see him turn around and go into the stupid little punch because he does that stupid animation where he turns his whole body and that's the dead giveaway, basically. He's turning his whole fucking body. It's like what Aris said about Kuma's hell sweep. You can see Kuma's big ass dumb head turning when you get used to it. This is, it's just, this is just like that. It makes you see things that usually are considered unseeable. So, don't like, you know, don't rely on this. One thing I wanted to check, though, I've always had trouble punishing uh, three in a row without the mid. Is that what this is? Because the spacing. It's negative 29. Okay. It usually, like, hits me. Oh, well, whatever. I guess if you have the range, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if you have the range, it doesn't matter. But if you don't have the range... You, you might have to do something crazy. Like that. <laughs> oh, man. You could tell you do this as king, you know. Oop. You really want to make them pay for being an idiot, basically. Whatever. You get the idea. <clears throat> There's something about the uh, counter hit version. Uh, let me see if I remember this. The hop kick is guaranteed. Hmm. 
That's fucked up. So what's going on here is if the first kick counter hits you, right? The second kick is guaranteed, right? Yeah. The second... Yeah, so the second kick is guaranteed, right? But the key thing here is that third kick. You can block the third kick. If you don't, the rest of it is going to hit you. And it gives him a free uh, a free hop kick. So if you happen to get counter hit by the first, you have to block that third one. You absolutely must block that third one. And if you block that third one... Can even low parry it? You cannot low parry, you have to block. Yeah, you can you can and it <laughs> just block it. Don't 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 while standing four. And then just punish that shit. So yeah. Uh while standing two to a sicker from I haven't gotten up to that yet, so don't worry about it. I'm going down the list, uh, Angel. I might actually end uh, this one soon as as part one. Because there's, there's a lot to King. This character has a lot going on. That's not head confirmable. Delayable, not head confirmable. Nah, you know what is hit confirmable? That's hit confirmable. <laughs> While standing two two is one of those where you'll be able to confirm them swinging at you, but I wouldn't call it like raw hit confirmable. Nah, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't buy that shit. This is one of those hit confirms that you'll get a feel for, like a Kazumi down forward one two. Like, you sidestep into Kazumi down forward 1 2. So, by the time you sidestep and you do down forward 1, you could easily confirm if they did something and then you, you, you could finish it easily on reaction. I don't I don't think, like, in a raw situation, I definitely see key players delay this shit, acting like they're trying to hit confirm it, but I don't I don't buy that this is, like, raw hit confirmable every time. No, that's a great move. Anyway, I'll go over that when I get to the move. Uh, anyway, so that's the Ollie kicks. Let's see how they track. By the way, the first auto kick by itself is a decent, decent low poke, but it is negative nine. Uh, maybe not decent. <laughs> maybe not decent. Maybe that's pushing it. Let me see something. Yeah, no. I take that back. It's uh, decent, like, for Oki, though, because it hits grounded and it does more damage than, like, down three. It's used often for that, and it's used often as a round ender because it has a lot of range. A lot of range, as you can see. So even though it's negative like 25 here, if I get him to block it from this range, I'm probably not going to get punished by just about anything. You know what I'm saying? So. It's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a decent poke by itself. And another thing is you could input it by doing uh I'm running. I'm running four. if you go into a full run you know how a lot of characters have the full run and you press four and they do the sliding low kick king does alley kicks alley kicks same mechanics exactly the same mechanics same, uh, you know, with the with the counter hit low, you know, it, it works the same as down three plus four, but he gets that at a full run, so that's not enough to keep in mind. So next we got, uh, oh yeah, I wanted to set the tracking. Looks pretty solid. Uh, most characters will probably be able to sidestep it to their right, I'm guessing. Because King can, but he needs like a full sidestep, right? To get around it. But it seems solid for King's right side. If I try to go to my left, I'm going to get hit. Yeah, 
yeah, see? So the way the attack coming is coming is from that side, so it covers that side quite well. My ass is killing me. All right. Next we got down plus two plus three. Oh, this move. That's the people's elbow, I guess. Which uh, people call it the people's elbow. I don't see the people's elbow. I see the great Muda elbow. That's definitely the great Muda elbow. That ain't no people's elbow. So anyway, we both only know American wrestling. So the Muda elbow is negative eight on block, but it gives a ton of space here, as you can see. So that negative eight doesn't mean shit. And on hit, forces crouch zero, but it still creates a decent amount of space here. Zero force crouch, and obviously it hits grounded. Oh, it does that new bounce shit. Does he have anything guaranteed? I don't know. He recovers too slow when he gets up, so it doesn't look like he has anything really guaranteed. It doesn't look like he has anything guaranteed. Even though it does that little bounce animation. That's a new thing in Tekken 7, by the way. That weird little bounce animation where certain characters get guaranteed stuff. Like Kazumi's Flying 3. If it hits characters grounded, she gets a free down 2. Maybe even better. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's really that move. It has a lot of active frames. So if he do uses his Oki... This actually has six active frames. You see how I'm at plus four? So if you use it from distance, first of all, plus three. <laughs> Looks like it should hit uh, low. Elbowing him in the toe and shit. But up close, it's zero. So you could get this at best, according to RB No Way, plus five, force crouch, right? On hit. Negative three does not force crouch on block. So that makes it a solid Oki tool. And it's always nice to have mids, good mids, good safe mids that hit grounded. Always a great thing to have because then your Oki, all you need to think about is low that hits grounded versus mid that hits grounded. And King has low that hits grounded, low that hits grounded. King has that covered. So you can just do whatever fucking mid you want that hits grounded, that being one of them. So nice, nice little tool that he has. Let's see how the tracking is. Yeah, no tracking. That's a huge whiff. Yeah, so... His hitbox goes in that direction kind of naturally, so you have to walk right, I guess. So, go left. But you shouldn't be seeing this in a neutral situation, really, anyway. You'll be seeing that as an Oki tool if you're against King. And if you're a King, you should use that as an Oki tool. Primarily. King has a lot of good Oki tools, turns out. Alright, next we got <clears throat> Down back two. Ooh, this move. Used to be a bound move. Always been a juggle starter. This used to this used to be a bound move, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that used to be a bound move. Uh, but it's always been a juggle starter, right? <sighs> I don't know what the best pickup is. It might just be down forward four. One. But um yeah, it was a bound move, thank you. So yeah, I don't know what the best juggle would be. Yeah, dot four four best pickup. You don't have to do fa fancy shit like I was just trying to do. You could totally just do. I mean, that's totally reasonable if you want an easy placeholder combo. Uh, until you learn the better shit, whatever the best stuff is. Uh, but it is safe on block, so admit it's slow. Uh, the start of being 21 frames, right? 25. I'm looking at the damage. Sorry, 21 damage, 25 frames start up, so it's slow. Uh, but it is only negative five on block. Forces crouch.
force is crouch, yep. Negative five force crouch. I don't, I don't think it tracks. Yeah, no, I don't. No. But uh, it being this slow, it's a decent thing to throw out when people wake up right in front of you. You force a wake up situation where they tech right in front of you and you want to check people that try to get up moving or smashing. That's a decent tool. Down back two to check them because it's high reward, you know what I'm saying? And it's safe on block, so. Uh, two active frames. Some key players use it to mix up duckers trying to duck a throw. Yeah, sure. It's a little on the slow side for that, but you can totally do that. You could try, you know, if the person you're fighting against has bad reactions, like this guy right here, you could totally mix up people that duck, like, you know, throws and shit. Um, so, yeah, that's down back two. Not much else to say about it. Next is down back three, his version of the sloth kick. But then again, he had it first, so Marta. It's more like Bard has his version of that move. Uh, this is a decent low because it moves him forward and it gives him plus frames. Only plus two, though. And it has good range. A lot of forward movement, good range. Uh, and on counter hit, it gives him a juggle. And an easy juggle now. He used to have to cross cancel for that juggle. But now he gets an uh, easy juggle. He probably, you know, if you want, like, baby's first juggle, you could just mash while standing 2-2. Two two. Easiest juggle ever, right? For 65 damage. He definitely has better juggles than that, but maybe this. Does that work? No? Well, he might have a better juggle than that. RP Marduk, replaced by a lesser character in every way. What's up, Tekken? T I read your name as Tekken. TK Stratosphere. I saw you in Juice Box's chat. What's up? Uh, El Creo, what's up? What's going on? So, yeah, um, down back three is very unsafe and it's probably seeable 23 it's seeable if you're sharp but it does crush highs so if you catch people like doing the one twos and shit you'll get a counter hit nice little bonus right but it is negative 16 right is that what it is negative 16 so what's king's regular while standing while standing launches is it one plus two or is it that that's 18, so I guess this is hop kick from crouching. If you're not slow like I am. There's like no block stun on this move, so to punish it, you gotta be fast, right? So you gotta be on point to block punish that consistently. But still, it's very risky and unsafe. But it's still a solid low, I guess. Uh, and it also hits grounded. So yeah, you have yourself yet another low that hits ground, and if you if you were to catch a wake up kick in the process, you get a juggle. A lot of that going on. So that's down back three. Uh, let's see how it tracks. By the way, it's plus two forces crouch. I don't think it has any tracking, but uh, oof, I got like a shiver down my spine all of a sudden. King has trouble stepping it. It's a possibility that it's a king thing. Maybe it gets good at catching step in general. Maybe it's because it's so slow. That's not a possibility. I don't know. Well, it seems pretty decent to catch step. Well, <laughs> not there, though. Yeah, not so much there. So it could just be king being bulky. It seems better at catching uh, his left side than his right side does, as you can see here. Down back three mix up game on hit is pretty much giant singer while standing two two. Yes, once again, just like I have been saying, zero, even negative one, but definitely plus one is a giant swing mix up. But you could giant, it's a little difficult to do, to get used to, but you could totally giant swing from crouching. Like, the easiest way to do it is off a crouch jab, see? But you could always giant swing from crouching if you're good at any practice. I am not good at it. Timing is probably strict because you have to crouch cancel with forward, right? And there's so much hit stun going on, and he recovers slow. Yeah, it's very difficult to do, but I know you, I'm pretty sure you can do it. I don't know if that was frame perfect, but I got it there. 
Definitely one you want to practice. Another one, another good uh, giant swing setup is off of this down two, because it's plus uh, seven. But once again, unlike the down one, it's difficult. It's it's awkward. Woo! Vinny man, I won't give in till I'm victorious. Good looking out, Vinny man. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, down two. It's another good setup, but. It's fairly difficult to do. I like it off a of down two though, because it makes it harder to sidestep. Maybe even impossible. But yeah, the recovery is weird, so it's fairly difficult to do there too. <laughs> I tweeted excuses not to work out. Dude, I'm getting fucking chubs again over here, boy. I could play drums on my shit. My arms are getting fucking flabby again. I probably can't even lift my 40 pounder over here like I used to be able to. Heavy. I can't even lift this shit anymore, man. I used to be able to curl this shit. I can't curl this shit. Ah, look at that. Just that alone is probably gonna make me sword more. Whatever. I'll get back on. I'll get back on it soon. Also, my fucking crack is showing right now, which is another sign of getting fat again. Down to the giant swing is easy. It's awkward, is what I'm saying, not difficult. Because the timing, uh, the recovery... The recovery is weird. He recovers slower than he does off of a crouch tag. Which is easy. It feels uh, natural. I do this shit all day, right? But a down two, it's a giant swing. A little awkward, see? I'm not a king main though. I'm just recommending that king mains get the hang of it. <laughs> I need you to get some healthier habits for Tekken 8. <laughs> I'll work on it, man, man. Just for you. Whatever. I'll be here all day at this point. But yeah. Um, I was up to down back three. So yeah, if you could get the giant swing out of down back three, it makes the mix-up game out of that a lot stronger. Because if they try to come up actually with a wild standing four, they'll get grabbed right out of it. He does recover crouching though, so you can totally rock bottom them also. <laughs> Which would make the giant swing mix-up even better, right? Yeah, of course. Rock bottom and wild standing four. I mean, even while standing two is a decent option there because you'll only get interrupted by like a, a, a while standing four. So that's totally, a, and getting them to swing while standing four will open up, you know, other shit. Uh, by the way, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but King has the 10 frame while standing move. While standing one. This is 10 frames, which is unusual. So you could punish like Brian forward, forward four. With that, you could punish Josie's down four if you're in range. Just a little <laughs> Marduk used to have that too as a 10 frame. I think Brian has that as well, standing one plus two. Um, all right, so that's down back three. Next, we got down back four. This is a fucking obnoxious move. I actually never researched how to punish this. Um, this crushes lows. It crushes highs, I think, beyond a certain point. Yeah, see? One, two, Jazz could float him, obviously. It crushes instantly? Well, not instantly, but it crushes quickly. Crazy. So, like, if you... Uh, oh, wow, there. I caught him standing there. Weird, right? Oh, he lost his old forward, forward, forward suit, so I just realized that. Thanks for the follow, Alaska... Josh? Josh Ray? Ala Alaskan Josh Ray. Thanks for the follow. Um, this can low crush... Yeah. I don't think it's fast, though. Like... Yeah, if I don't delay after the one on block, you see I'm catching him low. But if I put a little bit of delay on it, he goes over it. See? So it doesn't low crush instantly, but it does go under highs quicker than it goes over lows. Right? So what I never researched is what do you really get on block for this? It's negative 20, so you get like a, you know, a stomp and shit, right? Right? Oh, that floats him. You can float him. You could float him. Ah. 
So, I guess depending on the character. You know what? I want to test something. I want to test something. When you delay, it makes it neutral again. Welcome to the King of Iron Fist Tournament 7. Uh, where the hell is she at? So this is uh this does have kind of like a weird punishment rule, kind of like the Capoeira back three three, where you can float them as long as you hit them with a uh, fourteen frame mover faster. This one might have a similar rule to it. The Tekken buy is telling me negative twenty, and uh, RB Norway is telling me negative twenty also. So that's probably correct. Ah. Okay, see, I was curious. Oops. <laughs> yeah, no. Alright, I was curious. Maybe you could cross cancel it to down forward 4 3. Didn't I try that? I'll try it again. I thought I tried that. I mean, for the most part, I would probably just get a stomp for that. I was just always curious, because that is an annoying low. And I never researched how to punish it. I'm generally bad at blocking lows. One of my many problems is I refuse to duck. Refuse to. I'd rather move away from you or sidestep. I will almost never duck. I hate it. I'll duck when I think a high is coming. Or, like, I'll try to duck a string. But like when I when the lows or when lows start coming, I tend to not duck. Very rarely. <laughs> I'm super free to lows. And this is a very annoying low. Thanks for the follow. My amigo from Korea. Yeah, no, the down four four hits him, but. I'm just gonna say low parry this shit, right? That'd be cool if that worked. Uh, yeah, there's no tracking on that, right? That's just the tracking. Def, I don't. I'm pretty sure there isn't, but I'm gonna check it anyways in case. Yeah, no, there's no fucking tracking on that shit. And if he whiffs, you just get a grounded hit. And just stomp his ass or something. Do you float him? Oh, shit. Look at this. If you get him to whiff it, and you're not too slow. Right? Oh, <laughs> if you're not too slow. Too sl oh, my God. You got to be careful when you swing, actually. Oh, my God. If you swing too early, that's what happens. I don't know what he would get in that situation when you get him off axis. Probably a forward 2 1 or some bullshit, right? Um, so, down back 4. If you get him to whiff it, you can float him if you're sharp. Otherwise, just stomp him or low parry it. No real tracking. If you do try to whiff punish it like I was trying to, to do that to float him, be careful because you could actually kick into his hitbox and get counter hit. Uh, he doesn't get anything for free off of this, right? I, he definitely doesn't. What about on counter hit? Yeah, no. Yeah, no. He definitely doesn't. What about on counter hit, though? It... Oh, he gets something for free. Yeah. I'm trying to crouch cancel down forward four. Where are my king players at? Free ground throw and free people's elbow. Thank you. You're calling it the people's elbow. It's a Muda elbow. It's a Muda elbow. <laughs> it's the great Muda, damn it. It's the run up the ropes and then the quick elbow. It's not like a people's elbow where he sticks the arm out and the leg out and then he does the fucking stupid ass dab pose. That's the great Muda. I can't even do it. Shit. I suck. It's down. Okay. I am inputting it correctly. He's doing a down two even though I'm buffering. That's weird. 
See, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm buffering it, and he doesn't do it off of the sidestep. Odd. What the? Oh, uh, oops. I'm trying to dash into it now. Maybe a dash is better to do. Too slow. I would go for the cr ground throw anyway, though, right? So you go to a ground throw mix up. That's guaranteed, right? Yeah, that's definitely guaranteed. The ground throw attempt, obviously. Ground throw is just like so caliber throws. It's a 50 50. You gotta guess one or two. Yeah, I know. I was joking earlier. I was joking about people calling it a people's elbow, but it's clear that it's not the people's elbow if you want to get technical about it. I don't really give a shit. People call it whatever the fuck they want. It's how people call uh, Armor King's version of this Shining Wizard, even though it's Shining Black. It's just me being a fucking nerd. You're killing the joke, damn it. Um, not the elbow, but the ground throw, definitely. Yes, sir. Uh, I thought elbow worked, but... Yeah, ground throw definitely works. Yeah. It's great damage. So on counter hit, the cool thing is that in this game, they added that explosion hit on counter hit. So on top of the unique animation, on top of the unique animation where his legs flop up, you could uh, you get the audio confirmation on that counter hit. So if you're listening for it, you go for the ground throw, right? And you got a total of 32 plus 24 is whatever fucking math people you can tell. And then if I get the other throw, oh, too slow. You gotta dash. You definitely gotta dash up. So crouch cancel with a dash. Yeah, it's 32 for either one. So it doesn't matter if you do down back 1 plus 3 or down back 2 plus 4. It's the same damage. Is it 50, uh, 56? 56 damage. Good damage. Very good damage. Ha! The thing about, like... When you see a pro wrestling character in a Japanese game, their moves, I mean, this is like, this is, the, the crotch throw is the rock bottom. They did that for because of the rock, and I'm sure they did the uh, Stone Cold Stunner. I can't even fucking do the throw. You see this shit? There it is. That's clearly because of the rock, yes. This, if I were to show you the Muda elbow right now, you would see. There's nothing about that animation that's like the people's elbow. That's the great Muda. And it's a Japanese uh, game. That's how you can tell, because they're going to go with the Japanese uh, moves first. But this is um, clearly the stunner. They would not have done this if it wasn't a stunner. If he fell on his back like a diamond cutter, then I'll say this the Ace Crusher. If I want to get all wrestling nerd with you, you know what I'm saying? But that's just me being a fucking nitpicky nerd. Who really gives a shit at the end of the day? Nobody. Um... So we were just talking about down back four. So down back four is a pretty dang good move. It's hard to punish it like well. At best, you're probably going to see like a, a grounded hitting poke or a stomp or something. Or a low parry. Next, we got back one. This is one of King's best moves. This is a 12 frame counter hit juggle starter. Very, very, very good move to use offensively and defensively. Or just in the neutral. You could use this move in just about any fucking situation. You're under pressure and you're noticing that people are pressuring you when they're only like at plus one or two. Just throw that out every once in a while. Keep them in check. Yeah, it's a high, but he recovers fairly quick. Like in a pressure situation or in a neutral, it's actually very hard to duck and punish him. Uh... Does that mean King's ultimate takedown is the spear? No, Marduk's... Marduk's VTS 1 plus 2 is the spear. Because <laughs> Marduk was fucking Goldberg. You remember Marduk's, Marduk's versus screen face in Tekken 4 with the missing ear? He's basically Bill Goldberg plus Bob Sapp, visually. And they, they know what they were doing. That's what they were going for. Marduk also has the jackhammer. Now, uh, in the later games, Marduk looks more like Bob Sapp than he does Goldberg. But in Tekken 4, he looks exactly like Goldberg. Exactly like Goldberg. 
But later on, in the later games, they made it look more like Bob Sapp, who's like a huge celebrity in Japan. You can look him up. You'll you'll see what I'm talking about. He has like a weird ass music video called Sap Time. Anyway, so back one is not only like a counter hit tool. He also has back one two, which is his 12 frame Punisher. Uh, 33 damage, decent damage. It is a duckable high high, and it is unsafe on block. So if you're going for it in a neutral situation, be mindful of that, right? It is negative 13 on block, right? Which we could uh, verify. See, that's a punish, right? Of course, the actual punish is going to be that. Um, but also, it is a duckable high. And you can get lost for it. It's, uh, you got to be quick to launch it, though, but whatever. So what ends up happening is if you do counter hit with the first hit and commit to the string. What the fuck? That's not what usually happens. That's what usually happens. That's the first time I saw a second hit whiff on counter hit. Wow, what the fuck? I've never seen that happen during a match. Anytime I see that counter hit during a match and they go for the second hit still, it just connects. That's weird. Yeah, usually that's what happens. And it keeps him standing and he gets 35 damage instead of 32 and it's still plus 5. 33 rather. And it's still plus 5, right? Um... There's a little bit of space created here, but not much. But plus five is great. You can set up a lot of counter hit. That you can set that up for counter hit. You can set up another back one for counter hit. You could giant uh, swing them. You're still in range for a giant swing, right? Yeah, you don't have to dash for. It. You're still in range for a giant swing. So it's good shit. I don't even think you could size up the giant swing in that situation. Maybe let's see. Nope, that's not giant swing. Now I can't get it. <laughs> there it is. You know who made the screwdriver popular? The screwdriver at the end of King's multi-part? That's Scott Steiner. Big Papa Punk. The Steiner screwdriver. He made it popular in Japan and America too. But Yeah, see, I don't think you can sidestep this in this situation. Yeah. 10 frame grab. Yep, Scott Steiner, the Steiner screwdriver. Look up the Steiner screwdriver, you'll see. He started that shit in Japan. You you hear him, he's like... He's in a tag team match with his brother against... Um, I can't remember his name. This guy that used with the crazy mustache, that used to do the giant swing, and Great Muda when he was still KG Muda, I think was his tag partner. And he goes... <laughs> he grabs the guy like he's going to do a suplex, and he goes like, This is for you guys out there! <laughs> it's Scott Steiner voice lifts him up and then people are just kind of quiet and then he just tosses his ass in the air catches him and sits out with the pile driver and then you just hear people go <gasps> like this collective gasp like he just fucking murdered a man in the middle of the ring and then they start cheering like yeah <laughs> i love it he ain't getting up from this one that's what he says he ain't getting up from this one then he hooks him he's like this is for you guys and then he just fucking Crosses this guy in the air, catches him, and power drives him. It was the most ridiculous fucking thing. That shit was crazy. And he was totally doing that shit in the WWF also. He was doing it for a while. <laughs> in the in the in 92, I think it was, or 93. The early days of Raw, so it would be 93. He was using that shit there too. But it, it, the Frankensteiner was still his finisher, which is this. The Frankensteiner. He didn't do it that way, though. He would jump up and catch them off the ropes and then flip. He didn't flip forward, obviously. In case you couldn't tell, I'm a pro wrestling nerd. Where's the burning hammer? The burning hammer is Kenta Kobashi. I don't think, does King have the burning hammer? I don't think King has the burning hammer. No, he has the backbreaker. Kenta Kobashi, uh, the burning hammer is Kenta Kobashi's ultimate finisher. Japan, and some of them, they'll have these finishes that they only do every once in a while. Kenta Kobashi has only done, in all of his, he's retired now. In his whole career, like 20 plus years, He's only done the Burning Hammer like eight times. That's how protect that move is. And it's just this thing where, where he would have these long legendary matches every once in a while. They would kick out of all of his other shit. It was like, all right, now I'm going for the super finisher. And you're not kicking out of this shit. And he would set it up by sitting them on the top rope. He would carry them. And then he would walk to the middle of the ring. And then he would just fucking drop them on their head. And if you play Virtua Fighter, that's Wolf's ultimate grab. It does like Half-Life by itself. Burning hammer. He does it with the wrist clutch, though. 
Oh, it's it's uh, just like the Steiner screwdriver. It's a chain throw. Yeah, Armor King had it as like a side throw, I think, or a back throw. And uh, JC, for whatever fucking reason, had it as her has her running air grab, which was lame. I don't like JC doing the power moves. I think it looks cooler when she does like Deja Vu, which is Dragon Kid, who was trained by Ultimo Dragon. All right, uh, enough nerding out. Let me get back to. <laughs> I'm losing focus. <laughs> I could go on for fucking hours, obviously. I love the uh, pro wrestling stuff. Um. Uh, what move am I up to? Back one, yeah. So back one is a key move, 12 frame Punisher. Let's test the tracking. Yeah, so I'm, there's no tracking here, right? No. So this is one of those that you're gonna want to like do a little quick little dash or a quick little sidestep, right? Like that. See. So if you get people that sidestep into buttons, into slower buttons, boom. Great move. Great move. Negative eight on block by itself. So he also has another extension, back one four. I don't think this combos on, yeah, this doesn't combo. Obviously it'll combo there, and if I'm not mistaken, if it's the breakable floor, that will break the floor, and then you can continue the combo. Um, this is like it's it's designed, I guess, for people that duck this on on block, duck the uh, back one too. Um, you could delay it. You could delay both hits. Actually, I didn't even know that. What's the second hit doing this? Oh, okay, same thing, right? Um, does that knock down? All right, that looks like uh, not. No, he can't take that. He doesn't get anything for free though, right? Because he falls on the floor. Ah, uh, yeah, back one. The Mason would keep me wave dashes, wave dashes out of your face. Yeah, even though it's a high, uh, the moves out of wave dash are not high crushes, right? Hell sweep is not a high crush, so it's good. Breath of back one stops while running tools. Yes, it's one of those like a magic four. It's basically you can almost consider it like King's magic four, right? Even though King does have like a magic four. I don't know if you can combo out of it. He probably can, right? Uh, he probably can. It's probably hard, but you could probably combo out of it. Point being, you could totally use this as like a magic four. To keep people in check coming in. This is one of those moves you just kind of throw out. It totally is like usable as a magic four style move. Uh, yeah, back one has no tracking. I just tested that. Do the Majin combo. I don't know combos. I'm just going through his moves and just talking about what I basically know. Yeah, dash one, two, four, four, one. Oop. Oh, yeah, you have to do the Tekken, the old dash neutral one, two, right? Yeah, so King and Tekken 5 used to have to do dash dabs. So you had to, like, if you were a King player in Tekken 5 and DR, you had to learn four, four, neutral one constantly. And then you had to end the combo with, like, you had to do that over and over again, and you, you still had to end the combo with an instant Shining Wizard. Way harder to get good damage with King in the older games. No matter, his hardest combo here ain't shit compared to the old games. <laughs> I don't know the magic combos. But yeah, he's he's able to convert off of his magic forwards. Very difficult. This is obviously a much more easy conversion. And even then, King standing forward is 13 frames. So this is also one frame faster, right? And this, uh, the the range is similar. It's pretty. It's even more range, maybe even. It might even be more range than his standing four. So you know what? I wouldn't even personally. I wouldn't bother with King standing four at all. I would. Anytime I would think standing four, magic four. I personally, me, I would go with back one instead. I don't know if you guys would agree with me, but I would totally use this as a magic four alternative. <clears throat> Unless there's a good reason, you know. Um, now nah, I'm not going to evil. I don't have money to travel and I'm still in school. I'm just doing this streams as somebody that's been playing this series for a long time and liking it, but I never travel anything. I'm in New York. I've gone to like a couple of, a handful of local stuff, but I've never traveled. <clears throat> if I were tr to trying to play to compete to travel, I'd be practicing a lot harder. I'll tell you that much. I don't practice hard at all. All right. So we're talking about back one four now. It says negative nine. I don't know if you get anything guaranteed on him. That's 
That's probably the worst way to get up, but whatever. That might be guaranteed. Yeah, that's probably guaranteed. So you could probably get like a little stomp or a quick low. Um, stepping right. You're 100% right. Very rare to use magic for. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, stepping right. Yeah, magic force tend to attract somewhat to the right side. Um, all right, so I'm still going down the list here. So, I mean, this is like a goofy ass move. like, And it's clearly there to like catch people. Like, So the thing is, like I mentioned earlier, you kind of want to use the back one by itself to like fish for like counter hits, right? So the thing is, it is negative eight. So people could like when they block it, take their turn, right? But then you have these two moves they could delay to like clip people that try to take their turn. So that's another way to use this, but it is risky. Because this, you could eat like a stomp or whatever, and this is negative 13. So there's risk involved. But you could use them in that way too. And then this is still his 12 frame punish. And this is the mid to catch the uh, duck of that. And that is a unteckable knockdown. That is an unteckable knockdown. Because I have him set to tech right now, and he's not teching. Yeah, no. I'll take him a knockdown. You don't get any advantage off of it, but... Alright, so next we got... Back to... Oh, this is his old uh, bound move. I don't know what the usage for this would be now, though. This used to be a really shitty bound move that, <laughs> that frequently people would fall out of, but... Because his juggle used to be like this... Oh, wow, he actually fell out of that, too. Right? That used to be his bound juggle, right? His basic. But it was semi-inconsistent at times. Frequently characters would fall out of it. So, what would this be used for now? Maybe floor break? Yeah, that would floor break now. So that's one use for this now. If it's any good as a floor break, I don't know. Because that headbutt is good damage. It's uh, 22 damage. <laughs> right? Uh, that headbutt probably starts juggles, doesn't it? Oh, you could delay it quite a bit. Yeah, that headbutt is a juggle starter. Uh, it doesn't, it's not a natural combo. High, high. It's high, high. Doesn't even combo on counter hit. Uh, oh, I see. I wasn't paying attention. It's plus two, forces crouch. And you could delay it. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, forward two, two, two. That's a Mitsuhara Masawa move. Elbow, elbow, elbow. Mitsuhara Masawa is the elbow master. He passed away in the ring. He was Kenta Kobashi's main rival for a while, next to Tokiyashi Kawada. By the way, there's a move called Tiger Driver 91. That, um... No, not that. How do you do that shit? Um... This move, basically, which is the camera is blocking, can you see it? It's a cooler looking version of this grab. Mitsuhara Masawa did it. He would hook the underarms like that, hold them up, then he would jump forward and plant them on the back of their head while hooking the arms, and he would keep the arms hooked and pin them. Or he would like hold the legs and pin them. That's called Tiger Driver 91. Feel free to look that up. Also, King's Rage, uh, Rage, Rage, uh, Art. This is Mitsuhara Masawa's finisher, Emerald Flosion. Except he didn't do the point. <laughs> but Mitsuhara Masawa would pick them up and then drop, drive them down. And then he did the Kai, Emerald Flosion Kai variant, where he would pick them up like a suplex and then turn them around into that and then drive them down. So that's especially why I found it cool that they made that his rage, uh, his rage art super. Because it's like... They're clearly calling back like a little little tribute to a uh, famous wrestler that passed away, you know? It's our Masawa. So anyway, back to one plus two. Uh, Korean player T-Virus likes using it. Very high level king player. 
I feel like my T virus. High level King player. I got my man on the inside over here from Korea. <laughs> so uh, back to one plus two. Definitely seems to have its uses. I don't remember if it was like this in tag two, but it's plus two on block. So that alone tells me we. All right. So we know two things now. It's plus two on block forces crouch, right? It forces crouch. Yes. It forces crouch plus two. That's a good situation in general, and you recover standing. We also know that the second hit is a jungle starter if you're close. If you're close. Yeah, if you're close enough. If you're, like, at the tip, it's going to whiff. It's a lot of forward movement, though. Nah, I see he's pretty consistent. Yeah, you could convert that into a juggle. There's also something else. You could delay that shit. You could delay it quite a bit. So you could totally use this to... Ca Even though it's high-high and I'm sure it's duckable, you could totally catch people with this. It's obviously duckable, right? Of course. No surprise there, right? Uh, also, it is a headbutt, so no countering it. Unless you're geese. Uh, you're not going to counter that. So, because of that delay, you can kind of use this, ba this uh, back two to fish for it. Which is plus one on a hit. Negative five on block. So, you can kind of fish for it. And then you could totally catch people off guard with that headbutt. Um, what am I missing in the chat? What happened to my homie Triple H? Speaking of pro wrestling. Triple H, the king player from Korea. Is he still playing? I don't really watch videos like other people do. Like if I were competing, then I'd definitely be watching videos to steal strategies from you Korean guys. <laughs> I'd be stealing everything. All right, um, so this definitely seems like it has some good usage. Yeah, no tracking as I thought. Ooh, maybe some. All right, no, all right. Oh, wow, it's actually a little tricky. For King, at least, to go left. <sighs> Ooh, the stair step got me behind him. <laughs> Alright, um... So, yeah. No real tracking. I mean, it seems to kind of clip me if I go left, but I, f I have a feeling it's just because I'm King. Uh, but, yeah. And, obviously, you can use this as a floor break, like I said before. You can totally a, a floor break with that. I'm sure. It does do that hard knockdown too, where if they don't hold back, you could probably get a free ground throw. <laughs> I would guess. If not a ground throw, then at least a stomp or something. <laughs> um. Oh. Ooh. Oh, he does have a mid. He's got a mid to check people ducking. So this gets even better. I just remembered this. This is new, isn't it? This is a counter hit hit throw. He does the angle slam. Yeah, he does the angle slam off of this shit. <laughs> Alright, the Olympic slam. <sighs> right? The Oki looks good. That that looks like good Oki to me. Depending on how fast he recovers. Let's try to mash it down three there. Oh, no, I could probably block that. Oh, whoops. Ugh, let me just duck. Yeah, so I can block it. What happens if I hold back? Do I make it whiff? Okay, thought so. So yeah, the Oki isn't great because he recovers probably a little too slow. If he recovered faster, the Oki would be better. But that doesn't mean he doesn't have anything. Oh, oh, I hit him with the first hit, that's why. Let me try a little faster. Angle slam! Nah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, he recovers too slow to really get anything crazy out of it. Um...
I'm pretty sure everybody watching this right now knows who Low High is, dude. <laughs> anybody who's been watching tournaments, at least. Because he's come over a few times, so. Uh, what am I looking for here? Either way it goes, he does have a mid, mid hit check option. And let's see what is on block. And it is safe on block? Not only is it safe, it's negative nine, but look at all the space he created. Huh. Nah, okay. It's still not enough space to make uh, jabs whiff, really. Um, still, he has a safe mid-hitting uh, option to catch you ducking. And even if he doesn't get the counter hit, it's plus nine. Ooh, look at that. He backed up like crazy, though. Okay, yeah. He still backed up like crazy. Don't go for that. Yeah, don't go for that. Okay. Yeah, see, so because uh, I guess the way he recovers holding his stomach, he ducks highs up for a bit. So don't go high. But still, plus nine. It's very nice. Um... Next, we got back three. Oh, this is uh, one thing about back three is this push here, which I'll talk about when I get to it. It's free after that on counter hit. It's a little hard to hit confirm if you're not used to it, but if you get the counter hit on that push, that's a guarantee. It's also not a bad um, long range with Punisher, I suppose. I mean, you got this now that's better, but you know. The difference being, if you're unsure if you're going to get it in time, um, this is easily duckable. This is just one hit, you know? It does wall spot, obviously. But now that he has 4 2 1, it's not as much of a use for this. Uh, this is negative 10, but it pushes back. So, most, maybe Gigas will punish it, but most, I don't think, will be able to punish it. Yeah. Most characters will be unable to punish this. Gigas definitely. I think Gigas will easily reach that. Back three could punish a few things. Yeah, it has a ton of range. That you could clearly see. But I will say is it's 16 frames, so anything back three could punish. Oh wow. Alright, maybe it has a little more range than forward too. So yeah. There's probably some use for like pushback punishes. I got the perfect test actually. You guys hear that piano? By the way, did I miss any questions? The chat is active right now, so I don't know if I missed any questions. Oh yeah, I keep forgetting forward two one. Yeah, you can do forward two one off of the counter hit push. Back three is kind of forward two one kind of makes back three obsolete, right? For the most part, because you can do it off of this now too. I didn't even think of that, sorry. Oops, not that. Right, so he has that too now, yeah. You're right. So not shallow block, but still. Right? Okay. See, I was hoping that would be a use for it, right? Where you can reliably from range punishes, but it doesn't, it's not even good for that. Yeah, no. No bueno. Fucking negative 16. Fuck that move. Claudio with Starburst could punish that shit really well.
<laughs> I don't. I, I. I will. I refuse to shed any tears for Lars. I am not a fan of that character. As far as I'm concerned, Lars could remain bad for every Tekken game from now on. I dislike Lars. Alright, so, I mean, you know, I guess there's not much of a use for back three anymore. It does appear to have a little bit more range than forward two. Just a little bit more. It could just be, though, because of the stands. King's hands are up here, so it's like hitting his hands, maybe. I don't know. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you know, if, you, if you're testing block punish on anything with pushback and this doesn't reach, then maybe consider testing back three. It's about the only thing I can think of for it. It's not much use for it anymore. Um, next, we got back four. Ah, this shit. So up close, it does that knockdown from far away. Why is it saying close and far away like it's different? Arby Nori is saying something different for close and far away with this move. What's up, Nomachius? Oh, wrong button. That's a bad size to whatever. Uh negative seventeen. Negative eighteen. Weird. What's going on here? Back four close is negative six. I don't get what that means. Oh, it just means close. Weird. Oh, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Okay, hold on. Hold on a second. Okay, so what's going on is when I block that close, I'm in the block stun. But when you shallow block it, there's no block stun. See? I'm good. But when you block it up close, ugh, which is this one. See? You're in that heavy ass block stun like you just blocked the slash kick, like a running three or something. So that's the only time this is actually safe. If you don't get that block stun, this shit is super unsafe. Holy shit. Dude. It's negative 17 and you hit him in the back. If you have like a long range like thing, that's 17 frames. All right, wait. It says... Oh, negative 12. Hold on a second. How do I get the negative 17 to happen? Negative 15. Oh, no, it doesn't hit him back turn. This is lying to me. It should be... If it's negative 15, it should be hitting him back turn. All right, well... So, it's weird. Even though it's negative 18, 17, whatever, he does turn around when he gets hit. I wanted to check if... Because if, if he got hit back turn, you could totally hit him with this whole string in the back. But I guess not. What's up, Isaac? Back four is completely linear. I'm pretty sure it is, yeah. Not only do I think it's linear, I think if you're off axis, you might get that uh, that uh, situation where there's no blocks done. Just a guess. Just a hunch I have. Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, well, I can't really block it off axis to really test that. Look at that! Oh, one backdash! One backdash is all I needed. All I need is one back dash to make that shit negative 17. Dude, I don't even need, I don't even have to back dash. I just hold back. That tells me that any neutral situation we try to use is if I happen to back dash, I'm gonna make this shit awful on block. And depending on the character, you could really murder him for this. Yeah, back four is. I didn't realize back four was this bad, to be honest with you. There's a lot of things I'm learning here, obviously. That's why I do these streams. So I can learn and help other people learn. But I'm learning... A, this is probably the most I've learned 
in like a lot of characters because especially because he's been around for so long and these are a lot of these are old moves and I did not know this about a lot of these moves. <clears throat> they might have been made worse or better in some instances. I don't know, but I didn't realize that this move was this bad. Yeah, back you only has better punch. Back force definitely appears to be useless. I definitely would advise you not to use this move if you're a king player. But either way, let's just see what it does on hits. Because <sighs> that's what I do. Hard knockdown. I believe... Uh... No, nothing guaranteed. Even though it's a hard knockdown. That's, that's gimmicky shit. He's too far for him to really get anything off of it. So there's nothing to it. Oh, down three does give him the turnaround. How did I do that? What the fuck? When I delay it, I get the generic down, the generic low. But when I don't delay it, I get back turn three. Oh, I don't get what's going on there. That's weird. Weird. Whatever. Um, you have to lay it a little bit to get the back turn low. Uh, yeah, back four sucks. Next, we got up back two. Ooh, this move. I don't see this move used at all anymore. This is the old move, isn't it? Is that a homing move? This is a homing move. I don't know if this is a new or an old move. I feel like this is an old move. Whatever. Hard knockdown, is it? Yeah, that's a hard knockdown. Really? Really? It's not hard knockdown? Does that mean what I think it means? There's one use for that shit. Um, that move, it is really all. Yeah, okay. I was wondering. Well, I guess there is one use for it. What is it on block? Hold on. Before I even get here. It's only negative three on block. It's a homing high. It's 20 frames, so it's not that slow. And if you happen to have rage... Oh. You have to step forward a little bit to make sure, but... Nope, too slow, probably. Maybe it's just a delay. There it is. You have a delay, so wait for his legs to come down a little bit. Is that guaranteed? Huh. Uh, can I follow up at one with forward two, three. Oh, on regular hit. Hey, there you go. Thank you. I mean, you know, it, it, it's only negative three on block. It's high, it's homing. I mean, it is high, it's a bad thing, but still. It's homing, only negative three on block, and it has free follow-ups. I think that's all right. I think it's good. I delay this a little bit. Yeah, let's just verify that the negative three is right because this thing has been wrong before. So let me not get to jump to conclusions here. But the, the bot you see at the top, it says negative three. Let's make sure. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> so I'm gonna record that into jab, right? And we should exchange here. Thanks for the follow, Isaac. Should exchange down forward too. Yeah, see, negative three. If they were like 25 or even 22 frames, I mean, whatever. It's 20 frames. I think that's like acceptable. I don't know. That's just me, though. I would obviously prefer faster homie moves, but I don't think it's useless. I don't think it's amazing, but I don't think it's useless. I think it's something to keep in mind. It'll definitely catch people that like sidestep into buttons. People that do shit like this, sidestep into like a poke or something, it will totally fucking murk them for doing that kind of shit. You know? 
Like if I record this guy going sidestep into like a down forward one, for example, and I have a read on that shit, bam! Look at that. Easy streak. And then I get rewarded with whatever damage, right? It's okay. It's definitely okay. Ah, 44 damage versus 46. I would go for that second because also because of the shoulder, you'll be right in front of him. You do recover kind of slow for the shoulder. That actually might be bad. Okay, you are safe at least. Hold up a second. Sorry about that. Still watching over my injured mom and my pops is letting me know he's going to sleep. All right, so. Ah, so you do still have the advances on the shoulder. So I would just go for the shoulder then. Right? Oh, no, she's doing much. Thanks, Zed. She's doing much better. What happened was she was visiting my brother, uh, my uh, my siblings at my sister's place in Jersey to celebrate my brother's birthday. And she fell down the stairs. Uh, she got knocked unconscious, got like a cut on her head, and she broke both of her wrists. So she uh, she recovered thankfully. Obviously, the problem is both of her wrists. She has like hard casts on both of her arms. So she's like this was like a little over a month ago now. So she's able to do most things on her own but now, but she can't like you know, use the bathroom, <laughs> take a shower. It, when you get when you get injured in that sort of way, that's when he starts to realize how important it is to at least have one working hand. All right. But uh, anyway, thank you. She's in a much better place now, so she's, she's doing all right. Thank you, though. Um, but yeah, let me let me do something real quick. I'll be right back in a minute here. I do have to use the bathroom too, actually, so I'll be back real quick. And I'm back. What's up, Eileen the crew? Chug some water here. Alright, so 
up back to if you don't have rage drive I would definitely recommend doing the running shoulder tackle after it which is forward plus two plus three hey no I'm going through the whole class Gandhi but uh so you know glad I could help anybody because it's not just me teaching if you read the, uh, the title it's also me learning and I'm just recording my learning process so anybody I can help happy to help and feel free to ask questions about other characters if I know I'll answer oh, I definitely can't <laughs> I definitely can't do his wave dash <laughs> um, because yeah, I've never been a king player. I just dabbled in his moveset in past games just a little bit here. All right, so we just went through up back one. No need to test the tracking because we know that is a homing move. So next is up back two. Oh, that's just him going backwards with the Macho Man, right? So um, the unique thing about this elbow is that he is in the airborne state much faster than your average jumping moves. Like, hop kick needs, I think, nine frames to be considered airborne. So, for low crushing. Uh, even regular jumping needs more frames. Like, just holding up or up forward. This puts him airborne like that. Really freaking fast, right? If I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken. I actually might be mistaken here. I might be mistaken here. This might not be one of those. Up forward three. Second part. First part. Okay, I might be wrong about that. I think it is. Um, if it's not one of those, what I do know is he goes really high into the air. So he'll actually go over a lot of jabs and shit. Like, uh, I don't know how I can set this up. Um, it might still need nine frames because I'm seeing RB Norway now. So I might be wrong about what I just said. But, right, let's see if this is a good enough gap. Yeah, you see? This is really, like, the most fucked up thing about this move, right? See? It, like, jumps over jabs. You know? So, it tends to evade a lot of shit. And then, even if it gets blocked, I think he's safe. I'm not sure. Alright, hold up forward. Let me just do upward. Wait. Wake up, crouching. Now, this probably is not safe, but... Yeah, this is definitely not safe. It does force crouch, though. Negative 17. Um... Yeah, it's, it was a good... Exactly, yeah. Like Gandhi just said, S, Gandhi SSX. This used to be a way to get uh, over... You would He would jump over the running unstoppable tackle in the other games. Now the unstoppable tackle is blockable, right? I, I don't even have the spacing to do it. Um, yeah, see? That used to be unblockable. And it would be it would go through attacks. So it, uh, a way to get away from that when you're all the way back here... The average way is like sidewalk it late, right? When he, right when the character gets in front of you, would sidewalk it. I think certain characters like Lei would just fall on the floor <laughs> and it would whiff, shit like that, right? But uh, King would just be able to jump over like that. Hell, some characters could just do a regular jump, jump over it. That used to be a thing too. That characters would do, and you could still do all that stuff now. It's just now you could also block it, so you don't have to, you know, get around the attacks like that. You can use it to dodge while running too. Yes, sir. Just like uh, TK Stratosphere just said, you could also, any of those running pressure moves, you could do up back two or even just up two if you're this far away. And there's a low chance that you're going to get punished for it. Very low chance. At worst, you'll whiff, you'll fall down, or they'll block it, you'll fall down, and they'll like stomp you. You're probably not going to get punished for it. So it's the evasiveness is what this move is about. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think he also gets it for free off of his Rage Drive. Um, like, how can I set this up? I don't know. This is fucking, like... Okay, I am mistaken. You cannot get it for free off of his Rage Drive. Does he get it for free if he hits them on the... No. Does he? He do?
Oh. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna mash it. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. Sorry. Yeah. Depends on the setup. Okay, I had a feeling. Because what's going on there is the rage drive is probably hitting him earlier because King's legs are in the air. If you hit him in the ground... Let's see. Uh... Nah. Nah. What setup? You know of any setups that'll work? Try counter hit push. Wait, counter hit push into forward to, to lariat? Well, I don't need the counter hit push, do I? Well, whatever, I'll do it with the counter hit push. Hey, there you go. Does he get that regularly also? So here, oh, oops, here is probably because of the position. It's probably because of the positioning, right? They have to be face down, maybe? King can get free rage off of his forward on pursue. And you can up to after that. It hits more often by the wall. Alright. So uh, I guess it'll just ha it just has to do with the positioning, right? If you hit him in the legs, they could get up quicker. Probably that's probably what's going on here Because I can't think of any other reason why this would uh, not work in other situations, right? Yeah better at the wall, so Who told me you cannot rage drive from screw I just did it wait in combo what? Yeah, you can well, Chris what are you talking about you can't rage drive from screw? Well, whatever. Um, in general, I think the high damage option, if you cannot get that, is the Muda elbow. The people's elbow. Down plus two plus three. If you're unable to get this, there's, there's another option to get off of Rage Drives, obviously, is a ground throw attempt. The 50-50. But obviously, this could be broken, but you get 33... Twenty-five. That's actually lower. Twenty-five. Well, the elbow's twenty-three. So. Uh, oh, you can't get up to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's that much is clear now. Yeah. Don't most king players go for the ground mix-up? Yes, that's free. That's why. That's why I just brought it up. <laughs> uh, what I didn't know is the headbutt to the to the gooch. It's only twenty-five damage. That's actually really shitty damage. I thought it'd be better. Considering that this is what twenty-three damage. Right? Oops. Oh, but then the scaling would hit it here, actually. So maybe not 23 damage. Yeah, 20 damage. Well, in that instance, it's probably going to be even less because you're going to do a longer combo into it. So. So, yeah. The ground throw mix-up is always going to be the most damaging option. Ne then uh, in Tier 2 for damage, you get this whenever you can get it. And then if you can't get either of those and you want guaranteed damage, go for the elbow. Go for the elbow. Push is a great move. This is a fucking great move. Do you, you guys remember when Marduk had this shit? Marduk's version was sick too. And even before he was able to launch you for it, Marduk had the uh, the DR version, Tekken 5 DR version. It was, you couldn't sidestep it and it was 13 frames. That wasn't as big a deal though because the game had 8 frame jabs, but still. 13 frame, unsidesteppable mid push. That gave him a free forward forward two on counter hit. Which wall splatted. And then they changed it to a 15 frame mid without any any tracking. And but on counter hit he gets a free down forward one launch. Rest in peace, Marduk. You will be missed. Um, so anyway, yeah, you can input this as up two, in case you couldn't tell already. Up forward two and up back two. Obviously. 35 damage counter hit knocked down for 42 damage does he get anything for free nope he recovers way too slow to get anything for free it almost looks like he can get punished um, that probably breaks the floor doesn't it 
that would break the floor, right? If I like, if they wall splat high for some reason and you did that shit. It looks like it would. Um, and it is unsafe on block, apparently. I certainly can't think of any way to get up to make it safe. Ugh, I'm trying to input this up and I'm getting up forward. Sloppy. Sloppy. Oh my god. Alright, let me realign myself here. Yeah, that's a shitty situation to get it blocked. He does force crouch at least, but still. He recovers so slow that... I'm not trying to do that. can't do that from crouching? He can't. So interesting. I'm trying to crouch cancel ground throw. Weird. Well, whatever. He recovers quite slow. I don't know if you could get his rear for holding back, but I think you can. Yeah, not a ton. I just think if you were to hold back, you might be able to get his back. I think. Because that positioning, if you hold back, you have a vulnerable window. Typically, for shit like a king forward 2-1 to hit you, you know what I'm saying? Like, for example, I was uh, one of the earliest first moves I talked about. Look at this, just to remind you guys. Oh, I'm on the one piece side right now. Um, right? Oh. oh my god, now I'm not getting it. Oh my god. <laughs> there it is. Uh, too slow. See? If you hold back, you're vulnerable in that situation. Guaranteed if you hold back to get hit by that. And if I stand straight up, it also hits me in the back. If I hold back, though, you turn around. If you stand straight up, it hits you in the back. Yeah, it's still not a move you just throw out. Uh, counter hit 444 and a few throws as well to clip people back. Yep, definitely. Because that's a new getup animation in this game where in the older games you would roll, right? And then you would float them with stuff like a king down forward three. The the classic was king's uh, instant shining, king's like shining wizard, right? Into the, I can't even fucking do it. You do the shining wizard and then if they hold back, this would float them and you would get the juggle reset, right? That was the old, G sh the old shit, the OG shit. Now it's like, Look for forward 2-1 to hit him. Um, Alright, so that's up 2. Next is up forward 3. This is some decent... This is one of those decent round-ending moves. This is definitely one Aris likes to use, right? You can input this as uh, only up forward 3. Yeah, only up forward 3. So the cool thing about this is it's active for 8 frames. Uh, and it's active all the way down, so if people are grounded, it'll hit them. If they run into it, you know, people fair, fairly often people will run into this shit for God knows what reason. Right? Maybe it's because there's so many active frames. You think, oh, whiff, let me run in, and then the end of it just clips you in the fucking stomach or something. Uh, it hits grounded, right? I mean, do we really need to test it? I might as well show it, right? Puh, right? Yeah, so, it's a decent move. It says here negative 10 on block, but you are on the ground, so you're probably you're going to eat like a stomp or something. Yeah. It does cause some block stun, so the timing might be a little weird. Get up into crouch block. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll eat like a grounded hitting normal. But nothing too crazy, it looks like, so. Back row change ruined Lars Oki. <laughs> a lot of things ruined Lars in this game. <laughs> I don't feel bad for Lars at all. I'm sorry. I hate Lars. So every time I hear people complain, like, oh, Lars lost this, I just laugh. I'm like, yeah, you're damn right he lost that. <laughs> Fuck Lars. <laughs> but 
But yeah, I mean, a lot of, you know, I just did Lars's, uh, I just finished Lars's moves yesterday. I went through his whole moves. And yeah, Lars definitely feels pretty weak. Only characters I want to spam this against is low health, Oscar King. Yeah, the characters with rage drives that hit grounded. Yes, I agree. Characters that will really hit you hard for staying grounded with rage drives, like Oscar, like King, and I don't know if there are any other ones. Definitely something you want to, like, probably hold back on, right? But for most of the cast, this is a solid round ender. Also, if we do end up staying down, maybe consider being careful against, like, Leo, because Leo will do that jumping, whatever the input is, the jumping stomp move that will make you bounce off the floor, and then Leo will get the grounded punch. That's a free follow-up. The low punch. <clears throat> but, yeah, uh, I don't think this thing tracks much at all. But so many active frames. So many. <laughs> Zero. The game doesn't even know what to show you. Negative 3 to negative 10. Like, what? What does that even mean? Plus 2, negative 6. <laughs> like, what? Negative 6 is probably the correct thing. Uh, and the spacing gets a little funky if people block it. Well, maybe not. It looked like it did. Whatever. Um, so, next we got up back 4. Retreating hop kick. Probably doesn't launch. Damn it, run into it. Alright. Nothing on counter hit either. Just a uh, regular old retreating hop kick. Nothing to write home about. Um, and then up 4-4, four, four, standard hop kick, except for the fact that it is a knee for King. So, Asuka, standard counters, standard attack reversals will not work against this, because it is a knee. Geese will be able to counter it, obviously, but, you know, your standard attack reversal will lose to this shit. Um, still 15 frames, still negative 13. I feel like in Tekken 6, this used to duck jabs, right? It doesn't do that anymore, does it? He used to, like, duck jabs for a very small window in Tekken 6. Yeah, this used to go under... Yeah, it did, right? It definitely doesn't anymore. And I feel like you could visually see him duck when he did it. Now you see, you could tell he's not ducking at all. So I guess they really took that away from him. He could stuff jabs in the startup, yeah. So they definitely took that away from him. So you can no longer do it like that. You can make it a bootleg high crush if you input it as down back up forward four. You can still do that, you know, <laughs> if you want. But it'll slow down the move, right? See, you could totally do that shit. Uh, the hot knee has counter hit hitboxes on it. Further away, it'll catch moves that are being done when normally it wouldn't. Weird. Counter hit hitboxes? What do you mean by that? Have you covered 2 1 yet? Yeah, I started with that. I st basically, I'm using RB Norway's uh, frame data list, and I'm starting from the top. And I've been going down from there. Yeah, 2-1 uh, well, is great. Uh, as Angel told me, 1-2-1 one, one is great. 1-2-1 uh, one, one is great because that 1 on counter hit gives him a free 1-2. That's a uh, counter hit combo right there. You know? And of course, uh, every King player knows that the beginning of the first 5 hits of his 10-hit string are good. Because if the mid combos connects, then the... The fourth and fifth hit combo, right? Yeah, so I went through that stuff already. Um, have the AI attack and you'll get it to come out at further range. I mean, isn't that just me clipping the, the hurt box? Yeah, 
I don't get what you're, what you're trying to say here. Can you give me an example of a move? Of a situation where... Because based on your explanation, it just sounds to me like you're hitting someone that's sticking a limb out. Like a 2D style whiff punish. When people stick their limbs out, their hurt box sticks out too. Or their hurt bubble, whatever it is in second, right? Like Huarang's back... Uh, what's, it, what's it called? There's uh, back three or back four, whatever the launcher is. His foot goes back down when he recovers so you could clip his leg. And it's an easy whiff punish. Alright, well. Um, Alright, so yeah, it's just a regular ass hop kick. No tracking, I don't think. Pretty sure there's no tracking. Right? Yeah, no tracking on that. Okay. Uh, so next we got... Oh, up four. Up four does knock back. I don't counter it. It's a full juggle, huh? Man, he just falls out of that shit. <laughs> he just falls out. Weird. I got the reset version. But yeah, so up four launches on counter hit, but it's negative one. Wait, no. I'm reading the wrong thing. Up four is still negative 13. Okay. It does launch on counter hit, though. And the thing about neutral uh, jump hop kicks is they tend to create some space, but King's hop knee, since he's not doing like an outward kick, you can't really space it to make it like safe like Lily kind of does that shit where she jumps upward with her fucking hop kick. You can't really do that much really, with that much with King. It'll be unsafe no matter what. Yeah, sure. I'm probably going to call it soon and continue this next time cuz um it's getting late. But uh I'm going to go through a few more moves here. We got a couple more up forward moves here, so I'll call it after those. Um so yeah, standard ass hop kick. Next we got oh, capital punishments. He crowned him. He crowned him. Plus two. This used to be plus three, right? Plus two, huh? Well, plus two always a good setup for a shiny, uh, shiny wizard. Giant swing, of course. Uh, forces crouch, right? Up forward one plus two. Forces crouch plus two. It can be plus three because it has two active frames. Um. So it'll exchange with 13 if he goes for a while standing um, four after blocking it. It is also a, if I stop fucking up, it is also a juggle starter, right? Go for the big boy combo. Probably better shit than this, right? <laughs> Ah, well, I got the rest of it. I want to see how much damage it is, though. That's not that's not as hard as I thought it would be. It's just getting used to the timing of the forward forward one, right? It's. I thought it would be a lot more strict than it is. Let me not talk shit, because I'm gonna fuck it up over and over again. <laughs> yeah, see. Talk shit, fuck it all up. Oh my god. <laughs> there you go. 77 damage for a plus two low crush forward moving forward moving mid hitting jungle star now that you know when i when i put it that way it sounds cheap but in reality it's very slow right 
35 frames, he could almost react to this shit with like a jab. Like if people get too careless with this, especially if you're uh, if you're playing if you're, if you're playing against King and you have a character with really good jab range, like an extreme case of course being Gigas, you could almost visually confirm this shit and just jab his ass out of the fucking air. Like it's to it's totally doable, you know. Totally doable. So you can't just carelessly use this. And even if you don't want to challenge it with a jab, right? Um, you could sidewalk this. And it is a pretty big whiff if he, if he uh, misses it, right? Of course, step guard is great too. Like get, a, like, get a step in and then guard. See, if you happen to already be moving, you could totally keep moving and then hold back right when he lands. And if you happen to fuck up, you'll block it, you know? And then if you don't fuck up, you get a free launch. And then you can do whatever the fuck you want to. Um, very linear. Easy to sidestep, good punish, yes. Oh, yeah, punishes fireballs like Geese and Eliza's. Thank you for that. I didn't think to add that. Yeah, he could totally... That, this has happened to me when I played Geese and I fought against some, some King players. They would, they would opt to... I keep fucking up and doing that. They would opt to use this and they would jump over the fireball, wham! Although it felt really good because, like I just talked about challenging it with a jab, I was geese and I was like, oh, you're doing that? So I just did core circle forward without hitting punch. And then he jumped and I just jabbed his ass right in the air, standing forward. <laughs> Fucking baited that shit from a mile away. Um, the only thing that would have been cooler is catching him with the mid for even more damage. The mid counter. But anyway, you get the idea. Yeah, geese can reverse it, of course. Um, <clears throat> so yeah. This is a good move, just don't let it fool you into thinking it's like a super cheap move. It's kind of cheap. The lower level of play you're playing at, the more cheap it is. The higher level of play you're playing at, you're still going to use it, but you're going to use it a lot less. So keep that in mind. Alright, so yeah, that's that. Um, that's up forward, 1 plus 2. And then if you hold 1 plus 2, like I keep doing by accident, you'll get the unblockable. Where he jumps super high. Does he turn around like Armor King did? He does. And he does turn around. This is something that you could use off of certain setups, right? Does this hit grounded? I've seen setups for this. I feel I definitely feel like I've seen setup for setups for this. Um oh, look at that. Yeah, it hits grounded. That's why it's decent as like a setup tool, right? Um can he tech after that? I forget. No. So, what if he were to hold back? Okay, no. Not enough spacing for that. But uh, there are instances. Uh, Bernie Knuckle. Aren't there certain setups to make a guarantee? See, I don't know if there's setups to make a guarantee, but there are setups to, like, catch people doing everything except, like, holding back, and then you'll get them to hold back on Wake Up, which can get you other stuff. That I know. Uh, good for certain juggle setups. For example, end a juggle with back to four. And if the opponent holds back, they all get hit. Back to four is this, right? Oh, that shit floats, right? That's why? Right? So it's like... There's probably too many hits to do that. So let me just do the regular... Uh... Oh, the end the back to four setup. I definitely saw this recently. I saw this fairly recently. Oh, shit! <laughs> Oops. Oh, wow. Holy shit. <laughs> He's clipping right through his arm, dude. He's clipping right through his left arm. It looks like he hits him in the thigh. What the fuck? Do I need to sidestep left first? Oops. Yeah, I sidestep left there. Um, uh, let me just try to. It's a back row cast, not a side row cast. Let me just record it on myself. Holding back. No. 
Person will full crouch down forward two right against the wall. At the wall. All right, so it's for the wall really. But I feel, where wasn't there like mid stage mid stage setups for this shit? <clears throat> that looks like I recovered enough time, uh, quick enough to hit him. Just like I just at the wall then, right? My music, my music ended. All right, whatever. I'm almost done anyway. So I have to look back into this when I check it at a wall stage next time. So I'll I'll try to remember that for next time. We got one more move left. Yes, but they are difficult. Involves ending a combo with down forward two one, delaying the one. It's a margin setup that's really difficult. Yeah, little margin has it on his YouTube, right? Uh, Lick is I don't know his YouTube. Link is YouTube if people haven't seen it. Uh, it might work a forward two, down one two. Is that like a juggle in there? Oh, hey, look what we got here. Oh, doesn't work there, huh? How about if I don't dash first? Ah. Uh -huh. You could hold back to get away from that. It might work off of attack. That looked a little slow. I don't know. Um. Yeah. Nah. I recovered too fast. Um. It's guaranteed, but takes practice, timing, and many side steps. Yeah, I had a feeling because the mini side steps will allow me to realign it that first time. Yeah, because not my problem with that is it's difficult to do, and you're doing a specific combo drop that signifies that you're going for that setup, like a specific combo ender, not drop, but ender. Even adding the delay on the down forward two one is a tell that you're going for the setup. So there's too much going on, and if you don't get the last hit. You sa you actually sacrifice quite a bit of damage, so it's just like, yeah, it's like a pocket sand, you know. And if you fuck up, you're gonna get juggled exactly. So th there's way too way too much risk involved. But if you really want to get crazy and make the pe make the crowd pop, I guess you could totally learn that stuff. But yeah, you're right. I just think it's a general cool thing to know that it hits grounded. So if you get catch people sleeping, you notice they stay on the ground a lot during certain situations. That you might be able to catch them with this because if they get up late it's too late they're, they're gonna get hit right so keep that in mind that's the that's the key thing in my opinion to keep in mind about that move along with the fact that when you're up close he turns around um all right so one more move i'm gonna go through for today up four three plus four not much to say about this move right i don't really know what the use for this move is it crushes lows but it hits high it auto sidesteps to King's right, it looks like. Alright, so if I like, uh, input, uh, oops. But I don't know how good that sidestep is. Yeah, no, it's not a great sidestep. <laughs> so, like, that's one of those that you could manually sidestep right and then do it to make it like a double side step but if you do that way yeah this is kind of like a bootleg move right yeah i don't think there's any real use for this move but whatever i go through every move no matter how useful or useless because for newer players i like to show them here's why this move sucks i don't like to just say it right go through the motions and then 
it helps newer players realize. Like, a lot of you guys, you've been playing Tekken, so you know. But I still like to go through the move anyway. Um, let me try that. Yeah. Of course, Ali Kick's gonna work too. Damn, even that. Wow, you saw how that hit him? <laughs> hit him back to her. Um. <laughs> hit him trying to get up. Woo! Chaotic Magic Kark. Magic Kark. Magic Carp with the sub. Good looking out, amigo. I like that name a lot, even though I fucked up pronouncing it. I've seen you around. Chaotic Magic Carp 666. Future Garrido 666. Thanks for the sub. Yeah, so this also recovers really shitty. So you could do like a slow mid, right? And it'll probably hit him back to her, and I can't think of any slow mid. And if he stays grounded, whatever. So yeah, it's shitty. I mean, I, I would I, I could go through the motions and try to figure out the timing here, but we get the idea, right? <laughs> uh, a moment of silence for Armor King. Yeah, Armor King was, for, in my opinion, was way cooler than regular King. In my opinion. King is cool. I'm not saying that King is not cool when I say that. I just think Armor King, right down to his stance. Remember his stance? He would, like, st lean on the back foot and step forward and then step back. While this version of King is hopping around and shit, which is which is cool too. But Armor King just had this cool guy stance. I always thought his stance looked so fucking cool. And then he has a fucking WGF, man. So cool. Armor King was way cooler. But I don't... Be, because King has this, I don't think we're going to see Armor King back. King has this and this. That makes me think Armor King is not coming back. I still have hope for Marduk, though. I still have hope <laughs> for Marduk. Within the year, if Marta comes back, I'm going to be so fucking happy. All right, so, yeah, this move sucks. I mean, you know, if you happen to catch a low, you know, like that, a low that doesn't crush, then more power to you. It's a nice little chunk of damage, too, 28, but, you know, whatever. You know, why do that when you can do fucking hop kick and just kill him, right? Um, yeah. All right, so... What move is this on the list? So I am currently sitting on. Wow, the RB Norway list actually has these reversed, but whatever. So I basically I went through 60 moves, right? I did do the push a couple of times. I went through 60 moves. His strikes end at 83, and then we go to his 10 hits, and then we get like 100 throws here, right? 100 throw variations along with his uh, chain grabs. So th this actually might be a two-parter because I don't think it's going to take me super long to go through the throws. Because a lot of these, like testing them, is just figuring out when they, you know, how to break them, when to break them, you know, and maybe looking at the Oki that happens after them. I don't think it's going to be as complicated as like figuring out the Oki and all this other shit. I don't know. I say that now, but watch it, watch it take me like five or six hours. They call the rock bottom the clothesline press. I suppose in technical terms, that's what he's doing. <laughs> and they don't want to call it the rock bottom outright. Black bomb. Jumping knee. That's a generic name for it. Diving body press. This is a big... Or is it flying cross chop? No, it's diving... Yeah, this is a big move for Oki. When I go through this next time, this is a big move for Oki because it's active the whole time. And once people get up in certain situations, it'll hit them in the back and shit like that.